lovely imps. The time has come once again for us to hike Drama Mountain. That's right. As you all know, here on this channel, I have a series called Drama Mama, which you are watching right now. Drama Mama is a series where we take a popular drama or incident and um, we uh, look into it. We try to find the truth of the matter. We try to break people out of uh, just jumping onto something without any verification. We try to get people to stick to the facts. And we do this with situations that have some level of importance. Um, and the reason for that is that I think it's very easy to get sucked into drama cycles online that are unhelpful, unhealthy, and unproductive. And so I created Drama Mama with the goal of making a show that was entertaining and informative and that also teaches people how to engage with drama in a better way. And uh, so that's what we're doing today is a Drama Mama update. Now, we've been following a particular situation um, for some time. We've done quite a few videos on this particular situation. And the situation I'm talking about, of course, is the extensive and multivariate uh, uh, um, claims that have been made against Illuminati. Illuminati is a YouTuber who, for a very long time, made uh, anti-MLM, anti-corporate uh, corruption um, expose videos. These are videos that basically went to target multi-level marketing schemes, that targeted um, corporate misbehavior, that tried to teach people about these things. And Illuminati has done a lot of other content in her time, but that has been her main focus for some time, is sort of putting out a lot of videos um, that focus on corporate corruption, um, manipulative multi-level marketing schemes, etc. Um, and this year, it was revealed that uh, by a number of places, which you can go check out. If you've never heard of this, this is an update. So you might be a little bit out of the loop, but I've done a whole series devoted to this. And I can tell you, I think it's very important. And I'll explain why in just a second. Um, but you should go check it out. If you go to my channel and you search Demon Mama, Illuminati, you will find all of the videos. We even have a playlist for them, okay? They're all linked into one, one another. So you can watch them in order just by clicking the links that are in the videos themselves. It's a lot, there's a lot of history in this particular situation, but I do think it's important. The reason why I think it's important is that the way in which Illuminati uh, moved through these spaces and took advantage of people in these spaces is one that we see very commonly in YouTube um, spaces. And it mirrors the way that people are taken advantage of in other entertainment fields. I think it's very important that young, passionate people who are hoping to make their way in the entertainment industry and specifically in the YouTube industry understand the red flags that warn about uh, somebody who might be trying to take advantage of you, who might be trying to put you into a situation that you cannot easily escape from. And in this particular case with Illuminati, Illuminati um, has engaged in some very egregious behavior. Um, what we have focused on so far in this Drama Mama Illuminati series has been going through each of the claims that have been levied against uh, Illuminati, looking at the evidence of those claims, and looking at the corroboration for those claims. And... Um, as it turns out, there is just, there seems to be more and more every single day. Today, we are going to be focusing on the an interview uh, with a, a former employee, someone who claims to be a former employee of Illuminati, and the testimony of, uh, of another content creator who had a particularly... Um, a particularly intense conflict with Illuminati. And of course, what many of you are very excited and will be excited to hear me say, we are also going to be watching a 
um, major allegation that has been brought against Illuminati by one of the um, biggest content creators on this side of the internet, a content creator by the name of H Bomber Guy. Um, and this is actually a slightly different allegation than what we have uh, mostly covered. Um, most of what we have covered in in my drama in my drama videos, uh, drama mama videos covering Illuminati has been um, allegations of former collaborators and employees who were mistreated by Illuminati. Who that's what they've claimed. They they claimed and they produced, in my opinion, a large amount of evidence. Uh, proving that they were subjected to incredibly bad and unethical treatment at the hands of Illuminati. But today, we are going to be looking at a couple of different things that are connected um, and also important. Now, part of the reason why um, this has um, become such a long-standing thing is because there has been essentially no attempt whatsoever to take any accountability for any of the claims, even in the face of evidence. And in fact, Illuminati has gone on the warpath and begun sending out um, legal threats to people who criticize her. Um, what this has resulted in is an, incre in an incredibly entrenched position. And while Illuminati's channel has suffered, it is unsure at this moment whether Illuminati will actually um be forced to confront in a ver in a real way any of the things that she has done. Um anyway, uh I wanted to start us here tonight with the allegations made by another large YouTuber. This is the one that I just mentioned a second ago, H Bomber Guy. Now most of you are going to be familiar with H Bomber Guy. He's a very, very, very popular YouTuber, 1.47 million subscribers. Um, he has done some really big stuff. Uh, I mean, uh, he reached way out of his, uh, out of his um, general sphere when he did a really, really popular fundraiser for a transgender charity in uh in his home country which attracted the attention of bona fide uh celebrities um and that was a pretty incredible uh endeavor that he undertook but he's been growing in popularity over the years and uh, a lot of people are going to be familiar with him recently um recently uh uh he released a video called plagiarism and youtube now this video, interestingly, did not focus on Illuminati. However, it did include a major segment on Illuminati, and that is the segment we are going to watch. Many of you who are familiar with this video will note that the video was actually about another YouTuber by the name of James Summerton. I am not going to be discussing the James Summerton situation here because, quite frankly, H Bomber Guy did better than I ever could. And I don't like just like just you know sort of lazily reacting to something i like to um add my own commentary i like to add my own analysis i like to dive in and do a deep dive with my own community um i do recommend that you go watch h bomber guys full video to learn about the entire the what the actual video was about it's a four hour video so it's a real chunky video but i think it's very valuable and i think it touches on a really 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 important subject um, obviously, um, it, it's, James Summerton has ended up deleting his entire very successful YouTube channel as a result of the allegations, the very credible, almost irrefutable allegations that have been brought against him. But again, tonight, we are going to be focusing specifically on Illuminati words. and the segment that was done about Illuminati. So without any further ado, let us begin our first segment of the night, reacting to H Bomber Guy's uh, allegations of plagiarism against Illuminati. Don't part E. Part E. Here we go. Illuminati. It's a pun. 
I, I don't need to impress you. In 2021, when I was working on the vaccines and autism video, I needed something to listen to in the background while I built an Argos bookshelf, so out of curiosity, I put on other videos on the topic. One of them was by a channel called Illuminati, whose real name is Blair Zon. I hadn't heard of her before. She seems to do videos covering multi-level marketing schemes, pyramid schemes, and failed businesses, stuff like that. And she mm. seems to make a lot of them really quickly. I wonder how. The video was... fine? My phone was several meters away and I couldn't be bothered to reach out and get it and change the playlist, so it just kept going through her anti-vax videos. And at one point, I did a double take. There was a joint inventor on these products, a man named Hugh Feudenberg, a former immunologist who has been long controversial. In 1989, he was caught up in a bizarre lawsuit with the Food and Drug Administration, which told him he had to stop injecting his autistic patients with blood products. I remember pausing, budget being q hammer in hand, and thinking, haven't I heard this exact sentence before? In 1989, he was caught up in a bizarre lawsuit involving the Food and Drug Administration, which told him he had to stop injecting his autistic child patients with blood products. An interesting thing about the MMR scandal is literally all now, some of you who've been watching this series will, will recognize that um, we've talked about this particular clip before. Um, when the initial conflict between Blair and Legal Eagle started, which is the very beginning of the saga. I know it feels like a hundred years ago, but when this started, um, H Bomber Guy brought this up on Twitter. And of course, since then, it has gotten... The, the, the situation has advanced, okay? Yeah. All of its big discoveries can be attributed to the work of one man, Brian Deere, whose years of diligent journalism are basically why we know what we do about Andrew Wakefield. His 2004 documentary, MMR, What They Didn't Tell You, effectively berserk eclipsed Wakefield's career as a legitimate doctor. It's great, and Brian uploaded it to his own YouTube channel for free in 2014, so anyone can go watch it. This version has the timecode burned in at the bottom, which is kind of cute, but if you wanted to make your own video about the subject and use that as source footage, that's kind of annoying to look at. So I spent like two full days of my life trying to find a version without the timecode, and I finally found what I think is a copy of the original broadcast from 2004. Espen M says, I wonder if Demon Mama is aware of Todd in the Shadows video. Yes, I did see um, Todd in the Shadows video. I saw half of Todd in the Shadows video. It's a it's separate video uh, that's mostly debunking factual claims that were made by James Summerton, but we're not gonna focus on that for this, so it's not uh, amazingly relevant here. But yes, I have seen it and I intend to finish it soon. Harrowing stories of child abuse do not pair well with teasers for the TV premiere of Moulin Rouge. <laughs> When Dr. Wakefield launched the MMR scare back in 1998, I used footage from Deer's documentary in my video, explained how important it was, thanked Brian for all of his hard work, and even recommended his book on the subject that had just come out. And he actually emailed my producer, Kat, with metrics showing people actually did go out and buy the book after seeing- That is awesome, by the way. And this is something, by the way, you guys, you guys remember how Every single time we watch a video on this channel, I always tell people to go raid with love and we've gotten multiple messages specifically from other content creators, which I've shared with you all who have said, thank you so much for shouting out the work. Thanks for sending your imps over. It felt great to see all the positive comments and to, to see that people were engaging with something that you reviewed. That's why we do this. By the way, obviously, uh, obviously H Bomber Guy is not struggling at all. This view is this video is doing fantastically, but if you find this useful, you should always you should pop over to H Bomber Guy's channel, subscribe to him, and of course leave love from the imps in the comments. Because um we like to, when we build off of something that someone is saying or that someone has brought up, we always want to give uh love to them. It's a great feeling. It feels good to give it, it feels great to receive it. 
my video. Which is great, I love knowing that my audience actually reads books, thank you so much. So, the reason the Illuminati video sounded so familiar was because I had just re-watched that documentary. Then in 1995 he was suspended from practicing medicine. Then in 1995 he was suspended from practicing medicine. And made to pay a $10,000 fine for his misuse and misprescribing of controlled drugs. And made to pay a $10,000 fine for his misuse of prescribing controlled drugs. Professor Fudenberg has long been controversial. Hugh Fudenberg, a former immunologist who has been long controversial. Been long controversial? So, this is weird. She wasn't quoting Dia, she was saying his words out loud as if she wrote them. So, what's happening here? Well, after the bookcase seemed to stand up on its own, despite all the pieces mysteriously left over, I watched the video properly and noticed she does acknowledge Brian Deere and the documentary pretty openly. In 2004, Brian Deere came out with a documentary entitled MMR What They Didn't Tell You. This is, by the way, what, what H Bomber Guy is about to talk about here is something that we've seen um, repeatedly in this saga about Illuminati. Um, which is a, 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 a clearly intentional type of manipulation. Um, a willingness to engage in tactics that can, can essentially have no other explanation other than being in, manipulative towards a self-serving end. Blair watched a documentary and then downloaded it and used it to make her own. In the first 20 minutes, she plays a chunk of the documentary, or just quotes it, 25 times. More than Jesus. once a minute, you're hearing something Brian Deere said, from his mouth or hers. So this video is... lazy? I'm personally insulted that she just used the version of the documentary from Deere's YouTube channel with the timecode burned in. That's... It, that gets to me a little bit. After Blablato, Blablato Redux says, this sucks in a different way, doesn't it? Like, before all the drama, you used to fair like this content, and now you know it's a bunch of vapid, copy-paste, plagiarized BS. Well, here's the thing. Um, here's the thing. So, I have mentioned in the past that I found, um, a couple of, like, a bunch of Blair's videos interesting. This was long before the drama, before I knew any of this. In fact, I've even shouted out one of her videos in the past because I was like, wow, this was super cool and interesting. And yeah, it does suck. On one hand, I'm like, well, now I know why I liked it. Because she was lifting things from other very talented presenters directly. So she was stealing, stealing their, what they made and putting it in her, in her own voice uh, without telling anybody. Which obviously that's, you're taking something that was already compelling and you're just using it. Um, but also, yeah, it does suck. It does suck to be misled in that way as a viewer. And I've said this before in this drama, some of you will remember me saying this, but um, her behavior through uh, the way she is, the, the specific ways in which she has uh, treated her employees and the ways in which she is now being shown to have plagiarized, they mean that you can't trust anything that's said, which is especially damaging because she's doing videos that are supposedly exposing heinous behavior by corporations. So the fact that all of that is called into suspect actually does more damage and helps these corporations get away with bad behavior. Because now, uh, uh, you know, a major critic of them has been completely and utterly uh, debunked. It gives them room to wiggle. It's terrible. It's absolutely terrible. Anyway, let's continue. Let's continue. To the effort I put in, but that doesn't make it plagiarism. It's just not very good. And hey, it's not like this is her one source. She quotes a lot of other places too. Or does- Here's some of the times she quotes someone else in the video. Wow, look at all this research she must have done. One thing though, what's the source for these quotes? Okay, we need to talk about how to cite a source for a second. If you watch any non-Illuminati video essay, you'll see these pretentious little commies put some text in the corner telling you where their quote comes from. This is so you know what they're quoting, so you can check it or go find it and learn more if you want, and to give proper credit to the people whose ideas or knowledge they're borrowing. If you're using someone else's words in a video you intend to make money off, it's very important to give proper credit and attribution. Listing where the quote is from is important, not just so it's 
easy for people to find and verify it, but it's useful context which helps people interpret what they're seeing. If someone showed you a quote that made a person look bad, you might feel a bit cheated if they didn't mention its source is a blog by someone you've never heard of that doesn't exist anymore. I have a little rule for- Oof. Oof for quoting that other creators seem to use as well. If someone saw a clip of your video out of context, would it be possible for them to tell you're quoting someone and where it's from? Blair, for some reason, doesn't cite her sources. Extremely good rule to follow, by the way. Here's a part where she quotes Andrew Wakefield. Wakefield also stated, mumps, measles, and rubella together might be too much for the immune system of some children to handle. I love there's a tiny Andy there for some reason, but not saying where he said this is pretty bad citation. But this isn't a mistake. Blair is hiding the source on purpose for a reason. Yep. You see, yep. this quote is from the same documentary again. Brian Deere plays a clip of Wakefield saying it at a conference. Measles, mumps, and rubella given together may be too much for the immune system of some children to handle. Why didn't she just play the clip? She had it downloaded. Well, because she's already played so many clips from this documentary, it looks ridiculous. So she started quoting it and just not telling you she's quoting the one. That's exactly, that is exactly what I was talking about just a couple of minutes ago about the repeated thing we've seen with Illuminati is engaging in behaviors that become abundantly clear that this is being used to manipulate. This isn't just an accident. It's not just a, um, it's not just a, an oopsie, you know, it's not a, uh, it's not even just like a, oh, ooh, you maybe shouldn't have done that, ooh, a little problematic. No, this is like clearly trying to cover your tracks for something that it demonstrates that she knew what she was doing was wrong thing she watched. I wonder where all the other quotes come from. And more still, nurses were leaving saying they don't like what's being done. Nurses were leaving and saying they didn't like what was being done to these children. It needed three people to hold these kids, kids down, down in some cases just to have blood taken. I, I feel, feel very, very sorry for, for the children, children who I feel, feel were being abused. abused. This study had in fact begun with a contract from a group of solicitors who that were trying were to sue MMR manufacturers. Oh Chadwick said he had hoped the ordeal when it hit the news would, would die, its, die own death. its own death. It includes injecting mice with measles virus. He injected mice with measles. Extracting their white blood cells. Extracted their white blood cells and, and injected, injected the stuff, the stuff into, into pregnant, pregnant goats. goats. This is amazing. She just quotes people from this one documentary and pretends she did any work. Eventually, she stops bothering to even make it look like a quote and just starts saying Brian Deere's words out loud. And that's how the stuff at the beginning happened. She got so lazy, she stopped bothering to pretend she wasn't copying the documentary. In 1989, he was caught up in a bizarre lawsuit with the Food and Drug Administration, which told him he had to stop injecting his autistic patients with blood products. Then in 1995, he was suspended from practicing medicine and made to pay a $10,000 fine for his misuse of prescribing controlled drugs. MMR, what they didn't tell you, has been chewed up and spat back into your mouth like you're a little baby bird. My favorite part is when some of what she's saying appears in quotes for some reason, attributed to lawsuit with FDA. Like, yeah, see, this is another example of where it's ob it's 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 a it's obfuscating where it's actually coming from. No, Brian Deere said that. He established a scientific system that would satisfy Wakefield and Pounder for testing. And Pounder? Wait a second, who's Pounder? This Pounder guy never comes up again in the video. She brings him up here by mistake because she's paraphrasing another section of the documentary. He established a scientifically valid system that would satisfy Dr. This one is incredible. This is an incredible get from H Bomber guy. What a what a great catch to Wakefield and his head of department, Professor Roy Pounder. Roy Pounder is an important character in the story. Blair has cut him out completely to save time, but she accidentally kept this one reference. This makes the copying kind of blatant. She's referencing a guy who exists in the documentary and not her video. Obviously, stealing someone else's words is plagiarism, but on a more zoomed out level, so is copying an entire documentary and trying to hide it. Like, obviously there's something wrong here. Here's a hint. If you're trying to trick people into thinking you're not quoting the thing you're quoting, 
you're probably doing plagiarism. But here's where it gets interesting. Blair knows people might notice this, so she's come up with a defense mechanism. The video has a link in the description to a list of sources, where stuff she quoted or showed in the video gets linked. This is normal, lots of people do this, although usually they cite them when they use them in the actual video, but still. This is also, oh my god. So, by the way, the like, sources in description thing, do you, do you all remember the time that we decided to check the sources of a PragerU video? That was a fun time, wasn't it? I don't know if any of you remember that stream, but if you weren't there, we checked the sources on a PragerU video because they always boast that they cite all their sources. Now, they don't always cite them in the video. They often just have a link like this, a sort of, d d a, uh, a sort of link to a document that contains their sources. And when we went there and checked their sources, one of their videos cited their own video, like it cited the video we were watching and two other PragerU videos. So you went to the citations and one of the links went to the video that we were watching and the other two went to other PragerU videos. Actually shocking. But it's crazy, right? That again, you can manipulate people into thinking they're watching something that's impartial or something that's original even um just by little little tricks little slights of hand such as this so it's not it, blair is not obviously the only person who does this sort of thing but um you really actually if you want to be sure that something is actually you know honestly representing what it's saying you actually have to check those documents you actually have to look into it yourself otherwise you end up in a prager you or a blair type situation it's an unlabeled collection of links that's difficult to sort through, but if you keep digging, eventually you find a link to Brian Deere's YouTube upload of the documentary. So now if anyone criticizes the fact she ripped it off, she can say, No, I, I was using a source, I cited it, check, it's in my list! Somewhere! And she uses this flimsy excuse to basically steal anything she wants. Blair frequently plagiarizes people, never mentions they exist in the video or cites them anywhere, but she puts a link in a list no one will read. So that makes it okay, right? The video we've been talking about so far is the second in a series of three about Andrew Wakefield. Here's part of the first one where she talks about his early career. He became a fellow of- Also, before we go off onto the next thing, I find this part, this particular section about the citations, super, super interesting. Because, um, like, I learned about, like, I had to do in my high school, uh, advanced English class, like we had, we were, we were like part of our assignments was doing like annotated bibliographies, was learning how to do bibliographies generally. And we were graded very harshly on this. And it was driven into us that like the reason that you do that is because your citations aren't useful if people can't actually find them to verify what you're saying is true. That it grants credibility and therefore, um, uh, actual staying power to whatever it is that you're writing, if people can look at your sources, can find them themselves, verify it themselves, they go, oh, I'm engaging with an honest person. And it's crazy to think that, like, um, that, like, you could, like, somebody can put a document out there that's actually Im basically impossible to find where anything is being referred to. It's just a giant document of shit that you've seen that you thought about while you were doing this video in no particular order with no references to where that's being cited or anything like that. That that, that chaos in and of itself becomes an obfuscation. It's just, it's, it's, and I don't know, I have to believe, like I, personally do not believe that like that's just an oopsie that blair never learned how to cite s sources i can't help but think like i would believe that with some people i could imagine like a high school student thinking that citing a source by just linking up a, 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 a random youtube video that doesn't even tell you who made the youtube video or the title of it just putting the link there is like, uh, oh, okay, well, I put it in there, so now people can find it. And they don't think about the fact that, like, you know what that link goes to, but other people won't. Um, 
but I don't believe that in somebody who's made so many videos, who's probably had to engage with other people's videos. If you have ever done research of your own, if you've ever tried to do it and you've had difficulty pinning down a source, you know how important it is that people put a name and a location for citations for just a basic usability front. Anyway, I just wanted to, to, to hammer on that a little bit. Um, that just like, just like how on a basic level, a list of unorganized sources is so useless. It's so meaningless. Oh yeah. People brought this up. Um, 85 d 2 d Derek says, this is really, really funny. I looked at her Twitter and her apology tweet is apparently a 100% match for chat GPT. Hey everyone, I, I and we we said that it sounded like it was written by by AI, but that we had no way to prove it. And other people at the time claimed that they were very sure that it had been generated by AI. But it's interesting that there are checkers now that are able to basically um, that are able to actually use the algorithms to verify whether or not this was likely generated by ChatGPT. We said that. You can go watch my video about the, the Twitter apology she put out, and you can see where we said, this really sounds like it was written by AI. This really sounds like it was a extremely, um, like, it, like an extremely uh, rushed and hyper-conservative response. My goodness. Yeah, listen. I, I don't believe that they can be 100%. As people are bringing up in chat that like chat GPT detectors are not always reliable, that's true. They aren't. You can never know 100% if someone is using a bot or if they just happen to write like a bot. But uh, I do think that it um, adds credibility to the claim when people are reading it and go, this doesn't sound naturally written. This sounds like a extremely, extremely weird, um, uh, uh, weirdly worded, uh, 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 intentionally vague statement that sounds like the type of thing that you get out of AI. And then you also put it into a checker and the checker goes, yeah, based on our metrics that we have for AI generated content, there's a pretty good chance this is generated by AI. I just think that's very interesting. And I do think it adds credence to the suspicion and undermines the credibility of her claims. That's all. Let's continue. Let's continue. The Royal College of Surgeons in 1985 and a year later was a- Oh wait, I really like this. I'm sorry to interrupt again, but whatever. Mega Ritz from my chat says, citing specific sources clearly is a matter of not only respecting the source, but also respecting the reader and the viewer. Exactly. You actually said it better than I did. Well done, Chatter. You outdid me. ...ordered a Welcome Trust Traveling Fellowship to study small intestine transplantation in Toronto, Canada. Let me ask you real quick. Is she quoting a source right now? I mean, no, it's just stock footage, so clearly she wrote this part, right? No. She's just reading an article from the Telegraph. He became a fellow of the Royal College of Surgeons in 1985 and a year later was awarded a Welcome Trust Traveling Fellowship to study small intestine transplantation oh in Toronto, God. Canada. Dr. Whitefield returned to the UK in the late 1980s where he began to devote more time to research. Oh no, there's more. Joining the Royal Free Hospital in London, he worked on the liver transplant program and in 1996 began researching bowel disorders, autism, and the MMR vaccine. The average person watching this is being led to believe Blair wrote the words she is saying here. This is called plagiarism. The audience has no way of knowing she's actually reading them the fucking newspaper. But the article she plagiarized is in the list of sources. So we already know what the excuse will be. It wasn't plagiarism, she was just quoting a source. Uh. Without telling you. I'm imagining an alternate universe where Philip and Newt's videos just had a little paste bin link at the bottom, which goes to all the stuff they stole. Like as if that would make it okay. This is just plagiarism, but with a shitty excuse in her back pocket to create plausible deniability. The intent behind- Yep. Yep. I agree.
find this is pretty clear. Illuminati videos are like 90% quotes by volume. The part where she plagiarizes the Telegraph is in a five minute sequence mostly consisting of quotes from other places. More research groups with more sophisticated techniques failed to confirm Wakefield's findings. Wakefield in was actually born into a family of doctors in 1957. His mother this was- This data led us to postulate that there may be a role for me- <laughs> Okay, one of the things that I, I have to praise H-Bomber guy so much for is, is the, the severity with which he catches every single mispronunciation from all of the people he's covering. He does this really harsh to James Summerton, and I will say, I fucking hate it when chat jumps on every single mispronunciation that I do. But I'm a fucking live streamer, okay? If I fuck up and say that it, that I'm fucking incensured or uh, that I'm that I'm uh, uh, I don't know, <laughs> yeah, you call them mamaisms. Oh come on, I, all of you would make as many mistakes as I make if you were a fucking uh, live streamer, okay? If you had to sit in front of a camera all the time. And 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 try to uh, 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 pretense, then you guys would be you guys would be fucking up, all all up and down the place. Okay. Measles infection in Crohn's right disease, active even if at present, this role remains unclear. Talk, medical research study, however, and who is in a frantic rush. Seriously, huge chunks of the video are just reading entire screen. It's not that there's no excuse, by the way, for there to be a mispronunciation in a video essay. People mi miss things when they're editing through, but there are a lot of them. And it's also very funny when uh, the, the, the video essay in question is so lazily produced that it's 90% plagiarized content and you still can't get your pronunciation right. You can't even devote time to catching those falls of text from the BBC, various papers, Slate, The Telegraph, and Brian Deere. Yeah, she actually quotes Brian Deere in this one. Wow. But this makes the videos boring. She's just reading pages of quotes at you. So to break up the screens of text and make it feel more original, sometimes she doesn't tell you she's reading someone else's words. She's doing plagiarism out of embarrassment to make the videos less boring. When I think a video is being lazy, I do a little test. I check what sources the video used, thankfully Blair provided a list, and I compare it with the sources you would get if you went to the Wikipedia page for the topic. All of the quotes in that five minute sequence I mentioned, including the Telegraph article she plagiarized, are just linked on Wakefield's Wikipedia page. Oh, I know how this video was researched. This is a really common trick with lazy creators. Go on Wikipedia and quote all of their sources, and then it looks like you did a bunch of research and work. And to make it even better, she pretends she had to look for this stuff. Other studies have suggested there may be a link to Crohn's and measles, just not Wakefield. I was able to find a different study from the National Library of Medicine that's more recent. I was able to find? I mean, I guess I'm glad you were. One of the lights went off, hold on a second. I'm not sure everyone is fully convinced that quoting a documentary for 30 minutes while pretending you're quoting someone else counts as plagiarism. I mean- Oh yeah, some people are making jokes here about like other people who've done Wikipedia stuff, but okay. When a streamer live researches something on Wikipedia, there is a certain level, you could call that lazy in a certain way. I'm not gonna disagree with you completely, but it's at least honest. You're sitting there as the streamer goes, huh, I never thought about this. Let's go check Wikipedia. Then they open Wikipedia on their stream. You know you're reading Wikipedia and you're sitting there with them reading about it and talking about it. Like this is literally another level. It's trying to pass off Wikipedia as original content creation. Yeah, like, I, and the, and I'm not trying to say that there's not like that you shouldn't go deeper than that. Obviously, I don't think Wikipedia alone can be your um like be all end all, especially on important um political issues. And definitely, you should go a little deeper than that. But also, there's a totally different thing going on here than when a when a YouTuber goes when you're watching a live streamer and they go, "Huh, I never heard of that. Let me check up on this real quick." And then you hear them do this. You hear them go, you know. Hold on, chat.
Oh. Oh yeah, hold on, look at this. Oh my god, look at this. And then they put up Wikipedia on the screen, and you go through it, and everybody starts arguing in the chat. You know? It's a bit weird, but she cited it as a source, so technically it's fine. I see you, you little pedant. You think you're so fucking clever, don't you? But the fact she's trying to pass off other documentaries' work as her own is obvious when you realise if you didn't know the source material, you would have no idea she was doing this. To test this theory, I decided to watch a video of hers on a subject I knew next to nothing about, the Fire Festival, which I've really not looked into before. It was no isolated island, but an underdeveloped lot just north of a Sandals resort. At first glance, the video is surprisingly well researched, with plenty of backstory and explanations. According to Marianne Roll, a local that owns an Exuma Point restaurant, they had every living soul on the island of Exuma who could lift a towel working. Lots of it is just quotes, of course, she's still just quoting people mostly, but the fact there's so many quotes makes it feel well researched and credible. One of these people was Keith Vanderland, a pilot in charge of flying Billy around the Bahamas. According to Keith, Billy's team really wanted to do t And once or twice, Blair brings up one of the documentaries about the Fire Festival and mentions something that happens in them. Later, in a documentary around the event, Billy himself claims that they had rented 250 houses. She makes it very clear what her source for that section is. This all seems very above board. And at the end, Blair says those two documentaries were some of the sources she used for her video. I used both the Hulu and Netflix documentaries as sources for this episode, as well as various articles. I think it's fair to say an average person would think they were watching an original work with lots of research and sources, which tastefully brings up two documentaries when necessary. And that's what I thought too. And I thought that was fine. It was a pretty well put together video. Have you watched this yet? Yes, I watched the full video, but I wanted to react to this section specifically as a part of the update to Illuminati given that um, my entire coverage of the Illuminati situation has been basically documenting disparate sources of claims against Illuminati. Um, and I wanted to bring this one up because I think this is particularly well-structured and important to what we've been talking about with regard to Illuminati and the way that she ran her channel. Um, I think that it builds a further case against uh, the character of Illuminati um, that I think is important. So, yeah. But then I watched Fire, the Netflix documentary about the Fire Festival. And what I realized was that they had rented an area north of Sandals Resort. It was no isolated island, but an underdeveloped lot just north of a Sandals Resort. And then effectively photoshopped out the bottom portion of the map to make it look like they were on a deserted island. They were photoshopping out the rest of the island to make it appear as if Fire K was a deserted island dedicated to the event. According to Marianne Roll, a local that owns an Exuma Point restaurant, they had every living soul on the island of Exuma who could lift a towel working. They had every living soul on the island of Exuma who could lift a towel working. According to Keith, Billy's team really wanted to do tents, so what I did, what I did is, is I, I took, took my wife and we tried to sleep in a tent for one night and uh, it was so terrible. <laughs> her Fire Festival video is mostly her reading words from the Fire Festival documentary on Netflix, set to footage she got from the Fire Festival documentary on Netflix, with supplemental footage taken from the Fire Festival documentary that's on Hulu. But don't worry- Damn, double track drifting. Double track drifting. Her first source in her list is the Netflix documentary, so that makes it okay, right? And then further down in the list is the Hulu one. Although fucking hilariously, she doesn't link it on Hulu, she links it on 123films.cc, the po- Okay, okay, listen, listen. <laughs> that's kind of a power move, okay? Listen, yar. I'm just gonna say, that's all I'm gonna- No, okay, listen. Oh. Piracy website she watched it on. Now this is journalism! Yeehaw! Calvin claims he then went to the Bahamas for himself to see what was going on and discovered that the luxury festival tents were nothing more than leftover emergency relief tents from Hurricane Matthew. Apparently this part is from Calvin Wells. Uh, no, it's from the same documentary she got everything else from. One of the things that really struck out to me- Oh god, it's so- that's so- that's so sneaky! What a sneaky tactic! 
was that they were erecting these dome tents that were pitched as luxury villas that I realized were leftover hurricane tents from Hurricane Matthew. The footage playing while she is saying this is the same footage the documentary is showing as Calvin says it. She's just replaced the documentary's voiceover with herself quoting the documentary. It's God ridiculous. God damn it, quoting that is so bad. That is so bad documentaries you pirated for 30 minutes while pretending you're just quoting specific individuals is plagiarism. To give an example of how to do these quotes correctly, here's a New Republic article that quotes one of the things Blair did. As one caterer puts it in Netflix's fire, it's clear and to the point. The article isn't trying to look like it found this quote. Blair could have said, in the Netflix documentary, this person says this, but she'd have to say that 50 fucking times, and it would make it obvious yep. she's just yep, remembering yep, yep. Netflix at you, so she deliberately obscures the actual source of her quotes. This is to convince a casual audience she found these herself by doing actual research and reading articles and interviews with these people, which she didn't. This is passing off the work that went into making the documentary H, -bom H bomber guy really, really, really put his all into this, and it's fucking impressive. It's it's actually fucking impressive how much work went into verifying all of these because this is not an easy process, by the way. Transcribing and cross referencing a fucking an, an absolute metric fuckload of videos to try and verify where all these sources came from is an insane amount of work. And I have to say, I just wanted to take a moment to say. Uh, uh, to say I just, I respect that amount of work so much. It's, it's genuinely incredible. As her own. When she brings up the other documentaries, as if she's only just talking about them, this is a lie to make you think she hasn't been doing it the whole time. According to Mark Weinstein, a festival consultant, a metric shit ton, actually slightly more. And Didn't I just say a metric fuck ton? <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't even know that he was about to say that. I promise you. I wasn't, I wasn't forward remembering that he said that and trying to steal his words, but it does sound terrible for me right now. I'm trying to save face in real time. An imperial shit ton of this video is just footage from the Netflix. Now, I would never say an imperial shit ton. I would never say that. Who says that? <laughs> Only people who fucking come from metric using countries, I guess documentary. Seriously, you can't even fucking take your own screenshot of these articles? What yeah, the Jesus Christ, you can't take your own screenshot of these articles? Jeez, dude. Fuck. This isn't even plagiarism. This is genuinely just copyright infringement. Like, the copyright holder could get Bazinga. this video taken down easily, and maybe even take her to court for the ad revenue she got from their footage. You know YouTube's copyright system, where if you use five seconds of the wrong TV show, your video is demonetized? You're probably wondering why that didn't happen here. This is what the content ID system actually exists to stop, after all. Well, this is why the video has all these ugly films. Nah, that's not what the content ID system actually exists to stop. The content ID system exists to be able to siphon off money from literally millions of YouTubers who accidentally play a piece of a song in their video and then all of their money gets filtered away at a handful of like five things. They just claim content ideas to stop this shit. What Blair is doing is so obviously steep. Not to like, not trying to correct uh, H Bomber guy, please don't kill me that YouTube would notice, so she had to put bisexual lighting over all the footage she got from the documentary. Whoever's making these videos is fully aware what they're doing is unacceptable and is purposefully working around the systems designed to stop them doing it. Blair doesn't just reuse other people's footage without credit though, the video has also been edited to hide the credit that was there. The fire documentary itself used videos posted on Instagram and Twitter by people who attended the event, and guess what? It credits them. Okay, true, I am being corrected by chat. That content ID was actually a, a, a CYA uh, to prevent YouTube from being sued into oblivion. Yes, you're correct. I know. You're right. I was incorrect, and so was H Bomber Guy. The real reason is a giant fucking CYA. I know. The social media's in the corner. Blair's video steals this footage from the. Oh, this is one of the dirtiest examples. Documentary 2. Fucking filtering it out. Oh, that is so dirty. That is such a fucking dirty move.
and puts a filter over it, but also blurs out the social media. She uses a few clips from a Vice video as well, and the Vice logo gets blurred out so you can't tell where it's from. Since Blair's making a documentary out of other people's documentaries without permission for money, she's trying to hide the evidence of whose footage she's using so they don't notice and serve her a fucking cease and desist. Incidentally, when the Vice video uses footage from the documentary, it tells you, because this is how this shit is supposed to work. At one point she uses a clip of a news piece about the festival, which uses footage from the documentary and you'll notice they also <laughs> oh man that's some next level plagiarism don't worry i cited the documentary for 50 percent of the video but for the other 50 percent i cited an article which was citing the documentary <laughs> correctly credit the footage too. Blair's sources are full of examples of how to credit the source, but if she'd done the same thing, the word Netflix would just be in the corner for 30 minutes. The video's opening features this fan art, depicting her bro-fisting with a person I believe she recently sent a cease and desist to. Put this on r slash aged like milk. This piece of fan art oh. is better attributed than the documentary she stole this video from. The 25 minutes of clips and quotes from Netflix don't get this treatment. She just says, oh, I use these documentaries as research at the end. And I guess she's not lying. She definitely did. I wish there was room in the video to show you just how much she quotes the documentary without telling you while reusing greased up footage from it. But it's most of the video. There's just too much to show. I also wanted to go more into the ways making sloppy, poorly researched videos means the videos are full of obvious mistakes. But this video is looking kind of long, so I shouldn't. However, uh, uh, by the way, the full runtime of this full video is 3 hours and 51 minutes. So, uh, yeah. Before I realized I shouldn't, I'd already made all of it. So, uh, check out the new video on my hot new second channel. I have a second channel. That video is also very good. It's the H Burger Guy video, uh, that just gives even more examples, uh, which weren't as important to the overall message of this video. It's a, it's a good watch, though. It's about another 30 minutes or so of extra content of him um, basically just detailing how many examples were lifted straight out of her supposed sources. Channel now. It's not a live stream channel I hastily rebranded. Check it out if you want to see me complain about Blair getting the Stanford Prison Experiment wrong, and also Silent Hill lore. Why would you want to watch that? I don't know. This is a horrible pitch. As a creator, my question is why make three bad videos a week when you could make one half decent video every two weeks? Or one See, that's what I'm that's what that's what I'm saying. Why stream every day for eight hours? When I could, st if, with, but they'd be shitty, boring streams. When I can do a stream once or twice a week, and you guys will have a good ass time, huh? And pretty good video every. Yeah, videos like this aren't made for the reasons normal people make videos, like to inform or entertain or for the joy of making something. They're made for the purpose of putting out more content. As you guys, as my lovely fans will know, we've talked about YouTube content mills a million times. You got, uh, and interestingly, the content mills that he's gonna talk about are actually slightly different than the ones that we've talked about in the past. Um, you guys, actually, oh, a lot of you probably didn't see this because I wasn't able to put it up as a video segment because they actually copyright uh, claimed the entire fucking video. But um, some of you will remember I did a reaction to um, those like five second crafts and a bunch of those channels that are just un they're just shameless. Um, there are a bunch of are of like mega channels that will basically they will have like five channels, all of which have millions of subscribers. And what they will do is they'll have a production house that makes these just totally lazy videos um and it's interesting because what they'll do is they'll film a video and they'll post it on the main channel then they'll mildly re-edit it and change the thumbnail and title and post it on a second channel and then mildly re-edit it and change the title and thumbnail and put it on a third channel and they'll have three channels with the exact same content on it with different titles and thumbnails 
all of them with millions of subscribers making them ad revenue. And it's it's the same shit. Sometimes, and if you've, if you've ever watched any channel like this, sometimes you'll sit there and you'll go, wait a minute, I feel like I've seen this before. And you'll check your YouTube history and it'll say, no, you haven't. But that's because you did watch that video before, but it had a different thumbnail and title and it was by one of their partnered channels. That's not the type of content mill that's talked about here. However, we've talked about that type of content mill and how fucked up and how bad it makes the platform. Where it's just like, if you if you accidentally click a certain type of video, your recommendations will be filled with copy-pasted garbage from these mega networks that make garbage videos. So, sometimes just literal misinformation. Sometimes like dangerous misinformation that they just copy paste into videos for their 18 other channels with almost no editing changes. They'll make like slight changes. They'll put a slightly different music track in the beginning. They'll move the order of when things happen. Garbage, a garbage factory. Another bored person with the $5 says, the truth of this is that it's probably all a result of her time crunching her staff to churn out content and then likely she'll blame them. She already has done that. She actually has blamed her staff on multiple occasions. If you watch through the previous chapters on this, uh, before all these, the, before this plagiarism allegations got to the biggest level, we've actually seen her blame her writers um, uh, and members of her staff. Uh, uh, I mean, she was brutal. She blamed the entire collapsing of one of the channels that she was collaborating on, on everyone but her. She literally said, it's everyone's fault but me. I was the only one doing anything good. She's really bad about that. And yeah, her current videos are almost assuredly the product of uh, extreme crunch and shortcut taking. The phrase content mill refers to organizations which produce huge amounts of material very quickly, designed to get attention with no interest in quality. If you've ever yes, come seen an article in a search with a compelling title but which says nothing for several hundred words and only tells you the thing you wanted at the end while showing you seven million ads, you've had the content mill experience, my friend. Some of these are just a link to a video someone else made, but they got to show you ads. There's a ton of channels out there whose objective is to make as much stuff as possible as fast and as easily as possible. We just watched Cinemassacre become one of these, making easier, lower effort, worse videos, and for the ones that were supposed to be good, outsourcing the editing to a guy they underpaid so badly he later quit, and the writing to a guy who turned out to be stealing shit. The quality suffers, yeah. But if you don't care about quality, you save yourself a lot of time and effort. The people who are in this for the money are engaged in a constant race to the bottom to find the easiest possible content to make and still get paid for it. If you're a nerd, and Look at you. You've been recommending a YouTube short where a robot explains what happens in a comic. The sad story of Rocket Raccoon, the drunk who knew Batman's identity. Oh, oh this part's Daddy. crazy. After Homelander lost his mind. These float to the top because there's catchy names and there's hundreds of them. So they get recommended to everyone even though nobody likes them. My favorite insane content farm stuff is when an AI explains the plot of a movie to you, but the title is A Woman Wakes Up Covered in Bees or something. Welcome back to Movie Recaps. Today I will show you a drama, fantasy film from 2018, title be with you. Spoilers ahead. These are so perplexing they wrap back around to being performance art. He has only three organs left, but the scientists turn him into a super soldier. It's Robocop! An AI- <laughs> I forgot this was the example for Robocop. I completely forgot this part. Voice explains the plot of Robocop to you. Incredible. <laughs> but if something becomes successful, even if it's something this weird, people are going to try and do the same thing, especially if it's easy to crank out, like oh an AI God. recapping a film. The opening scene features a guy who finds himself confined within a large cube. The opening sequence introduces a pro- A large cube. These AI voices are getting really weird. A large cube. After this, the chaos caused by the Egyptians is depicted. Today, I'm going to explain a film based on the real-life story of the youngest warrior of World War II called Soldier Boy. Today I'm going to explain the a horror zombie film, titled Warm Bodies. And walked over to the man. When the man saw it, he was still cursing at his wife. The dog king has gathered hundreds of stray dogs. He is leading his entire army to attack the city. Hi Jake Recaps here. Today I am going to explain a movie called 
Allerlero. So you can see how content mill shit dovetails very nicely with ripping people off, if not outright plagiarism. And right in the middle of this ecosystem are reaction videos, where people just upload themselves reacting to other people's videos. The money almost makes itself! Reaction videos are a key piece of the Illuminati puzzle here, because that was Blair's previous content mill. A few years back. Oh, Chariot, that's horrifying. Chariot says, we are T minus four years to AI explainer videos about American history and chattel, chattel slavery. Oh my God, it's gonna be a nightmare. I'm, I like, I hope you all realize that we are currently tipping over into living in a Kojima game. Not even joking, no joke. We are straight up going to be living in Kojima world. So you better have a cool name picked out for yourself. I do. I'm Demon Mama. Everybody's good. That's a fucking Kojima ass name as fuck. You better have your Kojima names picked out because that's the world we're going into. Reacting to Reddit posts was a popular format, and it was easy to make, so Hacks jumped on it. She used to make videos reacting to popular Reddit posts, and she'd try to add to the jokes and, you know, not manage it. After all, if I can't trust the President of the United States, who can I trust? And that's, uh, <laughs> Tricky Dick. Very cool man, though. <laughs> oh, the, the, the pain! <laughs> Watergate scandal man himself. Extremely boringly reading out Reddit posts wasn't good content, but it was content. She saw moderate success doing this for a few years, briefly forming a communal channel where she and several friends reacted to Reddit posts together called Sad Milk, a channel which has since been completely obliterated, and she's currently sending cease and desists to the other members to stop them talking about why, so that's fun. But this kind of explains a lot. In a way, Blair has always just been reading other people's stuff at you. She spent over half a decade trying to become a popular YouTuber, by any means necessary. Before these, she used to do story time videos back when they were really popular, which led to a notorious video where she talked about clogging a toilet by literally filling it with shit. I didn't even see the hole, so I knew the poop wouldn't go. When video essays started being a popular format, she pivoted again and started making what she makes now. None of this has ever been about actually making something she cares about. It's always been about making something popular. When these finally caused her to really take off as a creator, she basically immediately deleted all of her previous cringe attempts to cash in on other trends. Remember when nearly a million views disappearing from Philip's channel was a bit weird? Try 40 million. Sounds like those videos aged like milk. Sad milk, that is. <laughs> The Illuminati channel is a video essay content mill. She has a team of editors helping to put out videos every other day, and she doesn't need a writer. Wikipedia's got her covered. And if there happens to be a documentary on the topic, she can just quote that 40 fucking times. The video happens overnight because she didn't have to do any work. There's a part in the vaccines video where she talks about all the documentaries she's watched as part of her research process. And I don't think she realizes she's telling on herself here. And I've got to tell you that I've seen a lot of documentaries doing research for these deep dives. The Netflix Betting on Zero for Herbalife, The Dark Side of Chocolate for Nestle, documentary series on the Hikikomori, and all the Goop episodes on Netflix, Blackfish for SeaWorld, there's a lot. This is just a confession. Referencing the big documentaries on a topic you're covering is fine. Quoting them or using some footage from them makes a lot of sense, I think. But at a certain point, you're just repackaging other people's work and selling it off as your own. And speaking of selling, why would someone do this? Well, when I sat down to watch the Fire Festival video, I got served two advertisements before I could hit play, and then immediately got hit by a commercial for Blair's plushie. Make sure to snag one before it's gone because these are not coming back once this runs out. Then 11 minutes- Yeah, we know that she makes crazy amount of money off these videos. And we also know, thanks to all of the other stuff that we've covered in the Drama Mama series leading up to this, we also know that not only was she making a ton of money, but that she was very credibly, but allegedly, deeply, deeply exploiting her employees at this process. So she was not only, um, uh, uh, or, 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 or in the process, she was not only making a ton of money for herself generally, but she was also leaning on the work of others and keeping them from being able to make good livings. We know now uh, how little she was paying the other people on her team. 
See, and I got a message from today's sponsor, Mint Mobile, where I could get Squixteen Dingles off my Bexed Burger. And we will begin to unravel what happened at the Fire Festival right after this ad break. Make sure you go to mintmobile.com slash MLM. That's mintmobile.com slash MLM. And then within seconds of that sponsorship ending, I got a second sponsorship. She has two right next to each other. Go to blueland.com slash Illuminor. Go to blueland.com slash MLM. That's 15% off your first order of any products of Blueland orders at blueland.com slash MLM. Now, I don't want to speculate how much. Aren't you happy that the Demon Mama channel is viewer supported? You don't have to deal with annoying two and a half minutes, uh, no, almost three minutes of, 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 of boringly read ads for random products you're never gonna buy. Isn't it great? Money Blair made from this sloppy shit that was made in about a day. Uh, but I do know how much a video with that many views- I'm not hitting the ad button. There's no reason to hit the ad button because I know that this, uh, I know that this video is getting demonetized because of that clip that people sent me to react to earlier makes in ad revenue, and I know what the overhead is on those plushies, and I've been offered similar sponsorships. So I'm pretty comfortable in saying she made a fuck ton of money from stealing someone else's documentary. It turns out it's the same twist it always is. Why did this stupid shit happen? Oh, it's money! This is a really good racket. I'm almost jealous. With a small team of editors, you could knock one of these out every few days. And she does. I mean, she doesn't need a writer. Now, maybe this technically isn't plagiarism. Maybe you give them a pass because having a link somewhere in a description makes it okay to have done this. But I think we can all agree that even if it isn't plagiarism, it is, at the very least, shit. When we're talking about creative works, questions like this aren't really about rigid definitions. It's about whether or not something passes the vibe check, as adults pretending to be children might say. A lot of this is about how something feels. Case in point, when Blair accused someone else of stealing from her. Plot twist. Not the first time, interestingly. Double plot twist. Because this is not simply a reaction to H. Bomber guy, we are going to be watching another such allegation immediately after we watch this. It appears that this is not the first time that she has uh, tried to get ahead of her own uh, plagiarism by accusing someone else of it. Manic Jack Attack with the Tier 2 sub, thank you so very much! Hey imps, new and old, tis the season of Impimus, indeed, which means quirkily, queerly queering, and raiding with love. Enjoy the tithe, Lord Demon Mama. Thank you so much. Deeply appreciate that. Thank you so very much. Manic Jack Attack for the uh, Tier 2 sub. List, baby! Party time. The legal eagle debacle. This is Devin Stone, law YouTuber and actual lawyer whose channel name is Legal Eagle. He's pictured here interviewing me in my pajamas in the final year I had hair. I used this clip so I could savor it for a second. On April 20th of this year, Blair accused one of Devin's editors of taking her video's style. They were trying to replicate her videos. Her evidence? One of his editors emailed asking how her editors achieved a specific effect in an old video, and then later asked on Discord if he could ask them there. I know, right? And if that's not enough, she posted some comparison shots showing, uh, they both have used torn paper effects when showing quotes, and, uh, they both highlight, uh, text when they show documents. Legal Eagle is no longer the- Wait, did I miss a dono message? I'm so sorry if I missed a dono message. Always, if, if I ever miss a dono message, please poke me. I try very, very diff- I try very hard to not miss any donos, but it is true that sometimes while I'm watching, the dono will fly by and I won't see it and it's totally fine. You have my permission to poke me and ask me to do it. XLR with the $5. Thank you so very much, XLR. I was doing a little cleaning while listening to the stream. Here's some money. Thank you for being both entertaining and based. Much love, much love as well. Thank you so very much for supporting the show. Sorry that I missed that, genuinely. Yeah. The one good lip. It's cut and We talked about it. We talked about the serfs, and um, look, again, I get along really well with Lance as a person. I've met Lance in person, and, and, and it's always been really nice. I think that Lance was incorrect in the way that he handled the legal eagle, or uh, in the way that he handled the whole Illuminati situation. However, uh, 
he seems to have been willing to admit that he was wrong and move on from there. So, you know. Dry, really. There's just one small question left, and that is, what, what the, the hell, hell are you talking, talking about? about? This is one of the most common things you see in all videos. No one owns the co- Lance reacted to this video and owned it during the video. That's very good. I knew he would. Uh, Lance is, in my experience with Lance, Lance is always capable of owning up when he is wrong to some- when he is wrong. So, again, I don't think poorly of Lance. I think he made the wrong decision, but sometimes people make wrong decisions, and what matters is um, how you move forward from there, you know? Concept of highlighting text. Tons of people use torn paper in their visuals when they're quoting books or newspapers. It's basic skeuomorphism, when the thing looks like the thing that it is. I do the same thing when I'm trying to look professional. Legal Eagle has used these visuals for years, before Illuminati has used them even. Who's ripping off who again? But in any case, it's normal for editors to ask each other Torpid Entree with the $5 super chat, the first super chat that Torpid Entree has ever given. Thank you so much. That is like, it's such an honor, seriously. Torpid says, the first time I've ever watched you live. I love your style of reaction and commentary. It's very earnest. I hope you have a good impmus. Thank you so much and you as well. Uh, uh, thank you. That's really kind of you. I do my best to, uh, react, um, in, in, in ways that are honest and productive and good. And also, I have a lot of experience doing it, so thank you so much. How they do things. That's how information spreads. You know those transitions that I do occasionally and Philip did literally all the time? I found out how to do those by asking another YouTuber named Bob Vids how he made his transitions so smooth in his videos in like 2016, and he told me what plugin he used. Almost everyone finds out about it by asking someone else whose videos they like how they did that thing. This is a communal craft where people learn and share things. That's why there's 12 million tutorials for how to do a chromatic aberration effect without having to pay for one of the professional ones. Editing is for the people. More like comradic aber- nah. The accusation wasn't just false, it illuminates, haha, <laughs> how Blair sees the world. She doesn't really understand the concept of sharing amongst creatives. I- I really, I really, really, really love this point from H Bomber Guy, and I think that it makes his video so much stronger that he includes this particular point. The fact that, like, sharing ideas is a real and extremely important thing, and that you damage the ability to ha for that to happen healthily by fucking stealing outright. Like, being able to share and communicate freely makes a better creative space for everyone. It makes it better for the creators. It makes it better for the viewers. It's just better generally. But if people can't trust each other, if people can't trust that they're going to get attribution and whatever, of, of, then, then it makes people uh, uh, secretive and protective and stingy. And they're not wrong for being that way because she's never actually created anything. Ripping people off is That's her- That's fucking awesome, Danny. That's fucking awesome. Patricia Mercer saying, Demon Mama demonstrating actually based reaction content. Um, I'm gonna talk about this a little more. I don't wanna get super distracted. You know what, I'll talk about it here. I was gonna say I was gonna talk about it later. But um, first of all, thank you. And secondly, I have always, always, from the beginning of my channel, made it a policy that anytime I react to anything, I want to be transformative in the way that I react. I want to add a lot of my personal flair. I want to add a lot of my thoughts. I want to add community interaction. I want it to be a completely different experience than watching the thing by yourself. Um, I am very bothered. Um, and maybe this is an internal problem. Maybe it's an ego thing. I don't really know where it comes from, but I am constantly bothered by the idea that what I create is not good enough um, or creative enough or original enough. I want, I, I am like not in, really interested in, um, like I guess to me some of the stuff that like James Somerton did doesn't make any sense to me because um, I don't want to be remembered like just for, for like being uh, a, a, like, 
reaching a level of fame or whatever. I want people to remember the things that I created, things that were mine that will carry on into the world. And um, it's something that has, that like, I guess I feel a lot of self-consciousness about being a streamer sometimes because I do feel like as a part of being a streamer, something that is necessitated by the business of it, you do spend time reacting to a lot of things. You do spend time building off of other people's work. Even if you're, even if you're somebody who's really original and I really do try to add a ton to the stuff that I react to. Um, but I guess maybe that just, I, I don't know what exactly what I was trying to say. I guess I'm just trying to say that like, I always feel the need to push to the next level. And when I'm reacting to something, when I'm building off of somebody else's stuff, I really, really, really want personally. It's it's a mark of personal pride that I'm able to build off of it, actually build off of it, to transform it, to make it a unique experience. And I do feel that like, I generally get feedback that that's the case, that people have um, watched the original piece and then also watched it again with me and have felt like they've had a different experience with it or that they caught, they saw that I caught things or, or to tip them off to something they didn't catch the first time. And that's, that's what I, I always want that to be the case. If I'm reacting to stuff, I do, I don't try to take myself too seriously. You know, I don't want to be arrogant or whatever. Not that I have, Oh, definitely. I'm never arrogant. Demon mama, never arrogant, but I do try to take my work seriously. I really do. And there are a lot of times where I find myself being feeling bad um, that I don't do enough original stuff. And that's why I want to keep doing more. I mean, you guys will notice that like a lot of the stuff I've been doing lately has been just my own personal rants and takes on things that don't really necessarily bounce off of anybody else's stuff. Um, like even things like the VGA where I'm like, hey, here's an event that happened. I want to talk about it and give my opinion on it. Here's a game that I played. I want to talk about how I felt about that thing and why I liked it or why I didn't like it and build off that thing. And of course, there's the segments where I just talk about topics that are important to me. So anyway, that was a bit of a ramble, but I hope it made sense. Let's continue her entire business model. So she assumes that's how the rest of the industry works. Just people competing to ex- Danny Fallen says, if we end up getting the rights to Holy Mac, we will transition directly into parody Catholic sketch comedy, right? Um, unironically, uh, if we are able to get the rights to Holy Mac, that will be a, there will be a change in some ways to the way we do things because I will absolutely be devoting a uh, time to writing a storyline and producing Holy Mac episodes. Um, yeah, so I'm not going to say we're going to pivot completely, but I'm definitely going to be spending time on that for sure. Anyway, let's continue. Exploit each other's ideas. To this sort of person, the fundamental act of asking questions and talking shop become devious tricks to get you to give away your precious secrets about how you highlight text. Basically, this is a completely ridiculous accusation. This particular thing really annoyed me, not just as a video editor, but because I had a personal history with her videos. Here was someone whose career is built on remaking other people's hard work three times a week, getting extremely aggressive that someone asked someone else how they did something. I'd found the Brian Deere stuff years ago and kept it to myself because I know this might be hard to believe, I don't like randomly starting fights with strangers, but since Blair seems okay with doing that, and it was on my mind anyway since I was already working on this video, I posted a video with some examples of her ripping off deer in a quote tweet. A lot of the reactions to my tweets seem to show that this made people rethink how they felt about- Windleby says, wait, 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 hold up. The rights to holy mackerel are up for grabs? I missed a lot. Oh, oh, you missed a lot. Now we don't know for sure if the rights are up to grab, but my goal are up for grabs, but um, church militant is likely going to die. Um, I do not believe that they are going to be able to continue their work. They have completely collapsed. And if that's the case, Holy Mackerel might also be dead, um, which is why I am going to reach out to the creator of Holy Mac and ask to purchase the rights to Holy Mac so that we can A, maintain an archive of Holy Mac for people to en enjoy, and B, make our own episodes of Holy Mac to carry it on into the future. So, yeah. 
about the work of someone they previously respected. And this, for me, confirms my hypothesis that whatever you call this, this- By the way, if you don't know what we're talking about, I have a video for you, okay? I don't mean to just, to just plug another Demon Mama video. However, if you don't know what I'm talking about right now, it was a it was one of the most incredible episodes I have ever recorded in the history of my channel. And that is a video which I'm going to tell you the title of. The title is We Watched an Anti-Gay Cult Explode in Real Time. I'm also going to link it in chat right now so that you all can go put it on your watch later if you haven't seen it. Bam, 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 okay? Go check it out. Boom, 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 okay? If you haven't seen it, oops. If you haven't seen it, go do it. Put it on your watch later because I'm telling you it's one of the best episodes of my show I've ever recorded. Absolutely deranged. Anyway, let's continue. Something wrong about it. Realizing how heavily regurgitated someone's work is changes how it feels to watch. Even if you like something about it, now in the back of your mind you're wondering if it's them you like and not the person they got it from. Plagiarism stains a person's work and makes it tough to appreciate even the original parts, because you'll never really know for sure again if they're original. And being the one getting ripped off feels pretty bad too, which I'm sure Blair- That's awesome! That's awesome, Siriatopora! ...understands, that's why she posted all of these tweets. Now imagine how those journalists and documentarians might feel. Imagine spending your life doing painstaking research, actual investigation, going out there and interviewing people and physically finding things, not just googling it and copying what's already there. And then imagine someone reading your words out loud in between sponsorships for dish soap, getting half of the words wrong, and not even making it clear how heavily she's relying on you to make her video. Brian Deere has had a lot of trouble with plagiarism. During the scare, Deere got sued and went to court to defend his findings. He could have lost his home in the fight to get the truth heard. So when people steal his work without crediting him properly, it's messed up. Some entire documentaries have come out which don't credit him. Channel 4 did another documentary about Wakefield recently, and they don't acknowledge that it was his work they were using. They pretend Channel 4 itself made those discoveries. They try That's really hard to cut- So dirty. So dirty. Dear out of the story, and it doesn't even work. Articles he wrote and his book keep popping up in the background. Dear has been battling to have his work properly recognized for years, while other people pretend they discovered it. Drag you into this, Brian. While copying and pasting text from other people's stuff is a kind of plagiarism, it's not the only kind, and focusing on that as the only way would be a mistake that falls short of understanding the problem. Even when Blair isn't just reading other people's words, she's still gutting other people's work and selling it, and I hope I've explored that properly. I wish the story ended there so we could move on already. I had other examples I wanted to get to, I swear. But on the 28th of April, Blair released a video entitled Illuminati Exposed, which contains an apology to Legal Eagle, a response to Hubba Guy's plagiarism claims, and I guess a response to the five other things she's currently being accused of. You're welcome, H-Bomber Guy. Thank you for delivering the final blow to Illuminati. The rest of us foot soldiers, such as myself, have been doing our best to document all of the other nonsense. We appreciate your support. Uh, basically, H-Bomber guy, you have been the artillery to our infantry. We deeply appreciate it. She seems great, and in the section intended for me, she responded to my tweet. So in the interest of fairness, let's see what she has to say. Before I get into the accusation itself, I want to address the topic of plagiarism. And that word has been tossed around a ton, and it's not something to be taken lightly. And I just want to take a minute to define this she word. She begins by citing the many dictionary definitions of plagiarism, which is very funny. On screen are definitions for the word plagiarism as defined by Merriam-Webster, Dictionary.com, and the University of Oxford. But then... She disregards all of them anyway, and invents her own special definition with a loophole. Uh, no, I, I thank you so much. No, that is so kind. You have no idea. Uh, being that type of, uh, that type of being seen makes me feel so good. Thank you so much. I'm serious. I mean this from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. That was like the nicest thing that I've ever, that, that makes me feel so fucking good about what I do. No. I'm showing multiple sources defining plagiarism, but the overall definition is going to boil down to this. Plagiarism is to take someone else's idea as their own or to not credit the source. The actual definition, you know, the thing that is wrong, passing off other people's work or ideas as your own. You don't even have to worry about donating Ivory Inferno, but I appreciate the most, the, the, I appreciate the, the thought. Seriously, thank you for being here and thank you for watching. I'm happy to be able to provide. 
has had this new thing grafted onto it to do with crediting of sources. The other definitions do bring up not crediting people as part of it, but Blair has made it central to her definition. Remember what I said about plausible deniability? This is Blair trying to cash that in. She objectively has passed off the work of Brian Deere, the Fire Festival documentarians, and countless others as her own, up to and including reading out entire paragraphs from articles without even telling you she was quoting anything. But in this new definition, as long as you hide a link in a document no one will read or mention once you used it as a source, it magically becomes not plagiarism anymore. She then- What a dirty trick. What a dirty trick. Gives the defense that she did cite Deere in that paste bin of hers, but her video demonstrating this actually shows why this is a cheap trick. When you go to my sourcing page for this particular episode, you can also see that the documentary is listed as a source. Illuminati's paste bin full of disorganized links is embarrassing to watch her scroll through. I assume she was trying to show how easy it is to find the documentary in her list, but then she couldn't find it. She cited it as a contextless YouTube link, so she has to have text appear on the screen saying which of these sources was the documentary. What really surprises me about- OOF! Wait, do I even- do I not have the ro- wait, I feel like I have the Roblox- do I still have the OOF? Oh my god! No, yeah, I don't man. think I have the OOF anymore. I think I got rid of the OOF. I thought I had it on there, but I don't think I do. Hold on, let me double check. Oh, what the? Oh, is the soundboard fucked up? Oh, god damn it! Forget it. About the response. I'll do it. Oof. This is how deliberately manipulative it is. She makes a big show of how thorough she's being in her response. With that definition being clearly identified, let's go ahead and take a look at what Harris brought to the Twitter table. She shows my tweets about the situation, obviously, and she reads them all out, which makes sense. She's used to reading people's words for a long time, but she doesn't show the video she's actually responding to. Harris posted this video saying, and I quote, Personally, at Illuminati, I would define plagiarism as something a bit more specific. For example, copying someone else's documentary directly into your script." End quote. After slowly and painfully reading out the entire surrounding context, why doesn't she show any of the video? Well, because it would make her look really fucking bad. If she showed the video directly comparing her with Dia, she wouldn't be able to defend herself at all. It's obvious what she did was wrong. Instead, she shows this one screenshot, which just happens to be the part where she's technically quoting something on the screen. And then she gives the defense that- You can tell the demon mama is an experienced oofer with the way that she hit that first- she hit that first try cold start. Listen, the Roblox oof is a sound that we we all, like, in our house, we do the Roblox oof just, like, IRL constantly. We'll hear something, uh, we'll be watching a stream in the background and we'll hear somebody say something, and, like, three of us in our house will just be like, oof. Like... <laughs> Look, you can see I was quoting it. However, in his own video, he shows where I'm audibly quoting a direct line from the documentary, and even visually you can see it on the screen with the quotation marks. A direct line from the documentary? The video says it's from a lawsuit with the FDA. I have to admit, this is some pretty clever sleight of hand. She's showing specifically the one section where she technically is quoting something. At the time of recording, it was really obvious to me that it was a citation of the documentary. You know she's pretending to quote a lawsuit while actually reading someone else's words, but the audience watching doesn't. Her official response on YouTube has way more views than the Twitter video she's responding to here. More people have seen a manipulatively framed single image from the video than the video itself. Oh. I got some replies from people who had clearly just seen her video and not seen mine, trying to defend her on the basis that she did put it in quotes, she just didn't cite the source correctly, and you can find it in the description. Some poor Illuminati fans out there think I'm mad at her for quoting some words slightly wrong, because they assume, in good faith, that the YouTuber they like wouldn't tell them an obvious lie. Sadly, that, that right there, what he just said, is something we have revisited over and over and over again in this Illuminati saga. The fact that her videos, like her response, um, takes advantage of her viewers who, um, who, like, 
basically are engaging in like some level of good faith and saying, oh, well, I trust this person I've been watching. I've seen them talk about serious issues and they t seem to speak the truth. And then she goes and makes a video and they take her word at that, even though it's a blatant lie and it does damage. And then on the long run, once um, once it's revealed to those people that um, that she was lying to them in such a critical moment, it undermines, like I said earlier, it undermines all of her other claims. It's It's so bad. God, it's such a terrible situation. Illuminati isn't a unique story. She's just the most prominent tip of the iceberg of content mill video essay garbage. If you want to see these extremely poor practices in action, you need only watch the videos about Illuminati. You know, drama YouTube. The worst part of YouTube. Koba says point of view, showing a picture of a man with a hatchet, who I assume is each bomber guy, but I'm not too sure to be honest. Drama YouTube is its own sub ecosystem of content mills, grinding out infinite buckets of slop about whatever. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. I'll be completely real with you all. When that when I first watched this segment, I was mildly scared that I was gonna get put in here. Even though I am not even close to a drama YouTuber, I have one series that I do about drama, and otherwise, don't fucking talk about drama. I do Drama Mama, and it's very, very focused, and I was a little scared. And then I remembered that my Drama Mama series is actually good! Oh! 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 that moment. So I'm not gonna milk this anymore after this video, okay? These people are so busy making the videos, they don't even have time to find out what Blair did. They're finding the most popular tweets on the topic and hitting the record button. Not enough that they steal ideas. They have to go out of their way to slander others' work for having the most banal similarities. Yeah, that's right. Wait, banal? <laughs> and in their most evolved form, they're not even doing that. They're watching other drama videos and making their own version. I've seen the compilation I made of Blair copying Dia in like 40 different places at this point, but what's really amazing about it is that it's now crossed the drama mill event horizon. So instead of being credited to me, it's credited to the other drama YouTubers the current drama YouTuber got it from. In this oh. instance, the previous drama YouTuber's name isn't even spelled right. That's- Oh, that is so bad. <laughs> the level of research we're dealing with here. I don't really care about getting credit for a video I made in five seconds. The point I was trying to make was that Dia is the guy who deserves the credit, but there's still an irony to it. I was trying to make a point about the importance of crediting people correctly, and now my Twitter video has- Classic Bolax. Human centipeded its way out of the annals of drama YouTubers into the mouths of second order drama YouTubers who don't even know where it's from, but are ready to reheat and serve it. This is the lowest effort shit you can imagine. They can't even spell plagiarist right. Information itself deteriorates in the process of producing industrial quantities. Plagarism! of content. The mask has fallen and the gears of the mill spin naked before us as they wheel and crunch all meaning to dust and raid Shadow Legends sponsorships. Go to audible.com slash repent harlequin to enter a coma and escape this madness. Anyway, thank you for taking the time to reply Blair. I disagree. I don't think your new special definition of plagiarism with a loophole in it is plagiarism. I think plagiarism is plagiarism and you are a plagiarist, but thank you for taking the time to respond. And good luck with all that other stuff. We should probably move on. Speaking of which, thank you to H Bomber Guy for disassembling the plagiarism portion of the Illuminati extended universe uh, um, uh, saga, okay? Uh, we are going to move on to all that other stuff. As you know, all that other stuff has been the bulk of what we as a channel have focused on. My Drama Mama series on Illuminati has focused almost entirely on, uh, boosting, giving air to, and analyzing the claims of people that she has worked with who claim that she has mistreated them, and I believe they have they have done so credibly. And other creators that she has mistreated, 
or claim that who, who she has allegedly mistreated, I should say. And of course, uh, we actually have more to talk about because this wouldn't be a drama mama if we just watched one thing and then moved on from there. No, 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 no. We actually have much more. But before we move on to those other things, uh, I just want to give my read of this, which is, of course, that H Bomber Guy has Illuminati dead to rights. Even if these were the only two examples that of her plagiarizing, the extent to which she plagiarized and the tactics that she used to bury the plagiarism, to hide it as if it wasn't being stolen, uh, demonstrates that uh, she is a practiced plagiarist, that you cannot trust that her words are her own. Even if it was only these two videos that she ever plagiarized in this way, it undermines her credibility. Um, and it means that you have to be suspicious of every other thing that she says because you know that she was willing to go so far um, to, to basically create a lazy video that she was willing to deliberately not just tamper with the footage to hide that she was using it and hide the source of it, but to um, mix ways of play, mix multi-track drifting styles of plagiarism to hide that all of it was basically from one or two sources. I think that H Bomber Guy did a, a phenomenal job of exposing and explaining exactly what went wrong here. Um, and I'm actually very happy that it was H Bomber Guy who tackled this particular issue because in truth, um, most people don't have the energy, the time, or the presentation ability to articulate plagiarism claims. I already mentioned this slightly earlier, but I'm going to say it again. Proving plagiarism is a very difficult process. It takes a lot of work. Um, it takes a lot of being willing to just sit down and transcribe something that is said and then search for it and cross-reference it for a really long time. And H Bomber Guy really went there. Um, so again, massive shout out. If you haven't seen the full video, Plagiarism and YouTube by H Bomber Guy, go watch it because I assure you, Illuminati is but a section, like a, maybe a, 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 a 20, no, not even 20, maybe 15% of the whole video is devoted to Illuminati and the rest is taking down an even worse plagiarist by the name of James Summerton. You should go check that out. However, we have another thing to move on to. What we are going to move on to is a video that dropped last month, not quite a month ago, it was a couple of weeks ago. We are going to be watching a video uh, uh, by Vangelina Skov. Vangelina Skov is the name of the channel. Um, and this is a video that multiple people have sent to me and asked me to interview. It is a, uh, or, or, or have asked me to review, sorry. It is an interview of a former employee of Illuminati. And unlike the previous examples that we've seen, where Wonderstruck, One Topic, The Click, and, um, Oz Media were collaborators who also sometimes were in the position of employee. Um, this appears to be someone who was never a collaborator, as, uh, as at least as far as I know, um, and was instead just a formal employee, being paid, is simply being paid directly to do something for Illuminati. And I've been told that I need to watch this and listen to this and hear this. Um, and I wanted to do so with, a, with our usual critical eye for evidence that we bring to the table here on Drama Mama. Um, yeah, so um, I've never seen Vangelina Skov. I'm not uh, super, super familiar with her content. Um, however, like I said, a ton of my viewers have asked me to look into this and I haven't had a chance to do so. So this video is from November 16th and we are going to watch this together. Again, the channel that we are watching is Vangelina Skov. I'm gonna upload, update the text real quick. Um, Illuminati Employee Speaks Out by Vangelina Skov. That's the video we're going to be watching. 
And uh, without any further ado, oh my goodness, what perfect timing. Gayfesh, thank you so very much. Thank you so, so, so very much for the raid. Welcome, come in, get comfortable, um, and, uh, and, and, and get comfy. Um, I already said that. I'm stumbling over my words, I'm so sorry. Uh, thank you for the raid, and very happy to have you and all of the School of Fish over here with us. Um, we are about to get into it. We're about to do in get into it. Delance says, will you do Cruel World Happy Minds video and Oz's update? Um, we are indeed going to watch the Cruel World Happy Mind video after this. That is what is on the docket next, but we better move forward because we're it's getting late. So let's get into it. One of Illuminati's employees has spoken out about her, and they have given us some big insights into how she was behaving behind the scenes, as well as some insights into how she runs the Illuminati channel, and a lot of other things that some of which I personally found really shocking. Previously, we've heard from other people in the social media space about Illuminati. We briefly heard from Legal Eagle, another YouTuber who spoke out when Blair falsely accused him of stealing her editing style. We also heard from former members of Sad Milk, people like Wonderstruck, The Click, Oz Media, and One Topic at a Time. These are all creators in the YouTube space who have opened up about their negative experiences with Blair. And we even got a video from Cruel World Happy Mind who talked about the terrible experience. This is the video we're going to be reacting to afterwards. Um, this video, I have been recommended more than almost anything else. And I have been hesitating, uh, uh, I was hesitating to react. Well, okay, I should say I was I was recommended a series of old videos about Cruel World Happy Mind, which seemed like a rabbit hole in and of itself. Um, people have told me to go look into that over and over and over and over again. Um, and I, I kept saying it's very complicated and it's a separate incident than what we're talking about now. So I don't want to, I, I, I would need to devote to it. Now, since those recommendations have come in. Cruel World Happy Mind released her own entire summary video, which is what we will be reacting to. Um, yeah. So anyway, let's continue. Experience that she had with Illuminati, as well as hearing to a smaller degree from different creators as well. I have covered every single one of these things. There's a playlist linked in the description for you if you need to catch up or if you need a reminder, check that out. This, however, is the first time that an employee of the Illuminati channel who is not Wonderstruck or Oz Media or somebody involved in Sad Milk has spoken out about her. And I am here today to provide you with an exclusive interview with this employee. Now, for very obvious reasons, this employee has requested to remain anonymous. So for the purposes of this video, we are going to be referring to them as Sam throughout. Now, Sam had quite a bit to say about... Hmm. Hmm. Okay. So... Um, obviously, anonymity is uh, understandable, but there is a small issue with anonymity. Um, and, uh, uh, and that is that when you have an anonymous source, what matters with an anonymous source is um, the credibility of the organization that is reporting it. So, for example, when... The New York Times cites an anonymous source. The reason why you can trust that they're probably being truthful is because they are staking their reputation on that fact. Um, when uh, 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 you know CNN or whatever has an anonymous source that they're citing, they are saying it, we are we want to protect our source, so our credibility is on the line. But that doesn't work as well when we are talking about. YouTubers. I'm not saying that it completely doesn't work. It just means that you have to take that with a certain level of reservation. Because at the end of the day, um, a YouTuber could lie about an anonymous source and get away with it in a way that, that a group like um, a, a, a literally legally uh, a bound group 
like the New York Times. Like if the New York Times lied about a uh, um about an anonymous source, not only could their reputation be permanently damaged uh, with their viewers, but also they could be in breach of laws in a way that YouTubers simply are not because YouTubers aren't bound by the same um, rules of journalistic uh, integrity that a, a massive journalistic institution is. Um, the only reason I'm bringing this up right now um, is because that's what we do on Drama Mama. No matter how much we feel uh, uh, a certain way about the topic at hand, we do our best to stick to the receipts and to stick to the truth, which means it is important in this particular instance that I remind you all that we only have the credibility of this channel, which admittedly is a large channel and verified by YouTube, but that Vangelina Skov does not have the same level of credibility that a journalistic institution does. So we're going to have to see, uh, just what I'm saying is keep that in mind as we're watching this video. Um, and I am going to make sure that it stays in your mind as we're watching this video, because I think that it's important to take these sorts of claims um, in stride for what they are. It is possible that this might not be the most credible case. We should keep that in mind. Anyway, I have not seen this interview, by the way. Uh, I have been recommended it by many people, which is why I wanted to watch it, analyze it, and react to it for our Drama Mama segment. Let's continue. What it's like working for Illuminati, as well as the way that she reacted to things while all of the controversy was going on. But let's start and get the good, th what? The good things that... out of the way first. Because of course I had to ask them what it was actually like working for Illuminati. Was she an okay boss? Were payments okay and on time and everything like that? Now I did assume that at a minimum this was going to be the- um, I tried to turn, oh, there goes the subtitles. They weren't working before, but the there we go. The one thing that was okay, but you know, you gotta do your due diligence and ask. But thankfully, I was right. For sure, there wasn't anything abnormal about payment timing for me. It was all pretty standard. Unfortunately though, that seems to be where the positives end. Working for her seemed relatively normal for a while, though this would- I put the, why would you, oh, the chromatic aberration on here. Oof change over time. She didn't have a lot of communication with much of the team, from the weekly meetings we attended that she wasn't involved in, to the discussions about each video that she very rarely, if ever, posted in. I've talked with her for not much longer than I've talked with you already. Which, to be clear, at this stage, we had barely talked at all at this point. So this kind of positions her as a very distant boss who was just sort of head of a company rather than the content creator. Which a lot of people assume to a degree was what was happening with Illuminati's channel, but I just personally find it kind of strange because I think YouTube is a space where you're not just getting entertainment. It's not just like watching a TV show because part of what you're signing up for is the creator. In most cases, at least in the entertainment genre of YouTube, you don't subscribe to somebody unless you like them. You like their personality, you like the way that they convey things, sure. or at least at the very minimum you don't dislike them. There's a bit of a stronger connection there than with traditional media, but this seems to be a case where the connection just isn't there or it's just faked. And we're gonna come back to that because we do get more information later on about how involved she actually is in the process. But during this conversation where Sam is talking about their experience with working for Illuminati, they said something that I was really perplexed by. One memory that stuck out to me was a terrible comment made by a team member during a call that did include Blair. Blair didn't make this comment, but months later when she made the Illuminati Exposed video, I found it hypocritical for her to claim comments Wonderstruck made were grounds for termination yet let this comment slide. Before I move on with the rest of it though, I want to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Fume. Going cold turkey might sound great in theory, but there is a better way to stop your bad habits. And no, I am not about to try and get you on some- 
I'm not going to play somebody else's ad. However, I will say that uh, this video that we are reacting to right now is Illuminati Employee Speaks Out by Vangelina Skov. So uh, uh, instead of listening to this ad um, or playing this ad, I will instead just let you know who we are reacting to and why. Um, I've been recommended this a lot, um, but I will be completely honest. When, like I said, when I first heard about this, um, I heard that it was an anonymous employee. And regardless, I think it's valuable for us to react to it. And perhaps for us to be able to engage with a, um, a, a source in this particular case, which isn't, which is not as reliable as the ones we've seen before. All of the other examples that we've watched, one topic, um, uh, one topic um and and the click and wonderstruck and oz they are they've all been able to strongly corroborate their case um and i think it's perhaps educationally important for us to at least look at one that might not be so corroborated and be able to apply a critical eye to that i am not i don't play i'm not going to play ads that i'm not paid for no no way anyway here we go oh wait it's still going Damn, this is a long ad. I wish I had, I will say, I mean, this is the power of, of advertising, but I do wish I had like a, a, uh, a, a non-nicotine vape that I could enjoy. But it's like so expensive and it's not that important to me, so. Malevolent Snow says, Vangeline has been pretty thorough with her research. I don't think she'd just take the word from someone who doesn't provide proof of employment. That's just my true sense. I'm not saying that that's what happened here. I'm just saying that um, we, you have to maintain a skeptical eye. And it, that's part of what I, that's part of the whole reason why I, um, Part, why I do drama mama at all is to train people to have a skeptical eye and to be careful. Um, and we, I don't know Vangelina Skov. I don't watch her content. Um, and she, you know, so I can't, I can't say that I like trust her claims. I'm not saying I distrust them. I'm saying we have to keep that in mind while we're doing this. God, the ad is still going. My goodness. Okay, here we go. Now we're back finally. One of the people that she discussed in that was Wonderstruck. Wonderstruck had worked for Illuminati for a time as an editor. And one of the things that Blair said was that Wonderstruck had made an inappropriate comment in a work setting. And that this comment was grounds for termination. However, we later found that allegedly this comment wasn't all that serious. And that for some reason this was grounds for termination, but Wonderstruck never received any kind of warning about it. The hypocrisy aside, it was an absurd comment to go unchecked by any decent workplace standards. The call was initiated as a sort of morale boost type of thing. We thought it was a meeting going into it, but we played Jackbox. So essentially this just sounds like a type of team building. There's a game where you write captions for images. There was an image of a monkey and the caption written for it was entering Detroit. This is the comment that was- That's, 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 that's not just an inappropriate comment. That's just blatant racism. Jesus fucking Christ made by that other employee while Blair was in the call, yet she did nothing about it and it went completely unchecked. Now if you're like me and you were confused by this, I did have to actually ask for clarification and before anybody calls me stupid in the comments, I'm European, I don't know anything about Detroit, I had absolutely no idea what this was referencing when I spoke to Sam. So if you're in the same boat as me, here's your clarification. Detroit is a city with a majority black population, the intended punchline being just racism. So let me reiterate what happened. They went into a call, a work call, with Illuminati present. They ended up playing Jackbox with a game where you can add captions to images. One employee, while Blair is in the call, puts a caption on a picture of a monkey that said entering Detroit, a city with a majority black population, and Blair said nothing. 
Now, I know that Sam said this is an absolutely inappropriate comment to go completely unchecked in a workplace setting, and I absolutely 100% agree, but I would like to add to that 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 is a completely inappropriate comment to go unchecked in any setting. I don't care if you're in a call with your best friends and somebody that you love and adore says that. That is something that needs to be picked up on immediately. But personally, I cannot imagine a scenario where that comment would even have come into my head. And I think if somebody made that comment in front of me, workplace setting or not, actually it wouldn't be a workplace setting, I don't have any employees, but any setting, I'm at the very least going to say, why in God's name would you think that that's an okay thing to say? So yes, like Sam said, hypocrisy aside, this is awful. And then you just add the hypocrisy layer to it, where Illuminati said that a comment made by Wonderstruck was grounds for a termination, which was, by the way, nothing like this comment, but the Detroit comment by another employee, who presumably Blair just wasn't pissed off with it. I'm not gonna lie, this far, this part right here is mega, uh, uh, this is just, this is extremely, extremely, um, there's nothing really to be said about this. Uh, an anonymous employee claimed that another anonymous employee said a racist joke during a Jackbox game that Illuminati didn't call out. I, I, this isn't, this isn't much. I'm sorry, this is, this is, this isn't much for me to work with here. Especially because we know that there's actual recordings, and we heard those recordings in the past, of um, Blair making ridiculously edgy jokes herself on former streams and on videos of her playing video games when she was like, like basically getting really mad at her employees for supposedly inappropriate comments, which amounted to somebody referenced the existence of furries. And she said that was a fireable offense. And then she has videos that are still up on the internet of her like just going ham. If I remember correctly, like slinging the R slur around. Anyway. Um, it doesn't sound unrealistic, Spyro, but it's just like that that would be a bad thing if it happened. And there's not much we can go off of this or any way that we can corroborate it. So it's just kind of a, okay, maybe that happened. That would be bad if it happened, but there's just nothing, there's not much we can do with it, you know? At the time, so it didn't really care goes unchecked. Yeah, we talked about that before. Fortnite said, wait, didn't didn't she supposedly get mad at the click for slaying the R slur? Yeah, and he brought up those clip those clips. Uh it was it, that was genuine hypocrisy that we had evidence of. Now of course I did ask were any other comments made like this after this or before this? Was this a common occurrence? Did Blair herself make any comments like this? And to Sam's knowledge, no. For one, it was very rare that Blair Killjoy says, I feel like a lot of people have said the Detroit thing is just normie shit, and I feel like casual racism is being hand-waved, as normie shit is pretty bad. Oh, who said that? I have, uh, who said that? I, I, I said it was racist before the video person did. Um, uh, yeah, it's, it would be, but we don't even know, we don't, we don't, I mean, I assume that the person is being honest, but we have no way of verifying if it actually happened or even if Blair was paying attention or anything. Um, it's definitely a like a racist joke, an obviously racist joke. I just, I don't know what we're supposed to do about it. Anyway. It was in calls at all to be able to hear her making any negative comments. And for two, they said they had never heard any other comments like that in meetings that they were present in. But let's move on then because Sam continued to talk about their experience and how things began to escalate. Things escalated, as may be predictable, when Illuminati's legal eagle tweet was made. Before this point, working for the channel was often standard for me personally. And of course, I had to ask, well, how did they escalate? The legal eagle tweets were made and it's a complete surprise to most of us. A weekly call comes around and everyone's discussing the tweets that came out. The situation's downplayed by most, people just saying the legal eagle stuff was handled the wrong way, but not that they didn't copy us, which they obviously did not. People were defending Blair. I do find it very strange that legal right. eagle's team weren't saying that legal eagle hadn't copied Illuminati and the Illuminati channel. Because it was very, very clear, despite what Blair tried to say, that 
Legal Eagle did not copy Illuminati. Again, I just need to remind you because it's so absurd, the things that she said were plagiarized were a ripped paper effect and a highlighting text effect. Two very, very common effects which are used all over YouTube and all over traditional media, mostly in documentaries. But I'm just gonna say maybe it's just that that wasn't the purpose of the call, that isn't what they were discussing, but at least they said that it wasn't handled the right way. Now this okay. call where they're talking about Legal Eagle and the tweets that were made ends, but there's another call soon after. Another call happens a bit later, and this time Blair's in the call as well, because she wasn't in the previous call talking about Legal Eagle or clarifying anything to do with the fact that she just decided to go on this rampage on Twitter and not inform her team. At least she's in this one though. She rants against the Sad Milk members, including Oz. I knew she was awful in doing what she was accused of by those Sad Milk members, but this call was absurd to me as it consisted of people piling onto and antagonizing those who posted against her. The tone was nothing like that of the Illuminati exposed video that was made. There was hardly, if any, accountability, but rather listing issues with some of the people making accusations against her. Though I would like to add, that is a lot of what happened in the Illuminati Exposed video. I mean, the whole thing was just her throwing everybody under the bus, talking true. about their mental health and trying to make them look as terrible as possible. I mean, take the click, for example, where she said that he was using slurs constantly, that he allowed really horrible people into his Discord server and just didn't care. And don't worry, there will be some things said about the click. But still, somehow in the Illuminati Exposed video, it did feel like she was trying to put this air of her being the better person in this situation, of her being the bigger person. I agree with that. But at the same time, she's sharing people's very intimate private details, so not really great. I'm not endorsing anyone by any means, but it was off-putting that not only did these accusations come out against her, but most of this call was spent defending her or antagonizing others. When speaking with Sam, I- I mean, that does check for what everyone had said. Like, I mean, all- uh, The Click, Wonderstruck, Oz Media, all of them did say- Like, they have said that one of the things that she did is that she would get mad at people and then she would- um, basically try to get everyone that she knew against that person to the most extreme degree possible. Basically, someone pissed me off, we all have to burn the bridge together. Which is, um, you know, um, that's a pretty common manipulative social tactic. Um, you know, to like basically have a small slight and, and then all of a sudden they're a villain and everybody has to be against them or else she's gonna get mad at you or whatever. But, um, so far... This employee, this this alleged ex ex employee, has not brought very much to the table, and I don't know if I'm gonna finish. I don't know if we're gonna finish this video. I don't feel like there's been um, anything groundbreaking here, or even that has impacted the story at all. Really wanted to know what exactly she had said about the other people involved, and before I show you what they said, just for context, at this point. Threads had been made about her from the Sad Milk members, but this was before Wonderstruck had made his video. Which of course means it was before Oz Media made his video as well. She said she heard from a source that Click underpaid an editor. She mocked Oz for various things, such as the PC they built for her blue screening. Something which, again, we discussed in our previous video about Illuminati, where her Discord DMs were leaked, and she had been discussing this blue screening PC and using it to frame Oz Media as sort of just a terrible person who didn't care and was gaslighting her staff. And I believe she brought up. See, this is that's another one. The Discord DMs I didn't really cover because I didn't think that they were that substantial. Um. And I could have missed things in there, but I didn't find the Discord DMs was any more substantial than everything that we've covered. So far, this is this is a, this is a bit of a nothing burger. The contract they signed that would have them owe her an absurd amount of money. She boasted this point and seemed happy about it. I think this contract is mentioned in Oz's latest video about Blair. And yes, this was mentioned in Oz's video, and I have talked about this in previous videos again. 
Links are in the description for everything. It is so much to go into in depth in this video, especially since a lot of people will already know what I'm talking about and I'll just be repeating myself. But Illuminati had Oz Media sign a contract stating that he owed her a lot of money and that he would have to pay back quite a lot monthly. And this was all done under very shady looking circumstances because not only was the number that he owed her much higher than is seemingly possible she also went into this with a lawyer knowing that he couldn't afford legal representation but this is just this is just restating stuff that we knew from the other video so he didn't have a lawyer and the fact that she's bragging about this and seems boastful danny says Currently, this video just feels like content churning about Blair. This seems to be rehashing the past. It's not even a corroboration of events because the employee is completely anonymous. Yeah, the employee is anonymous, referencing other anonymous employees, and they seem to only be referencing events that were publicly that were public knowledge anyway. So we don't know that this this anonymous employee could have just seen um, the video and said, "Watch this. I'm gonna I'm gonna leak." as an anonymous employee and I'm going to make references to stuff that other people like the click or Oz made reference to. I'm not convinced by this so far. Um, yeah, I find this video to be, um, I, we might stop soon. If this, if nothing interesting happens soon, we'll probably stop watching this video. About this kind and of- And move on to one that I know has at least a little bit more grounds. Makes me wonder if maybe my own little theory about this was correct. Fully personal opinion, and I don't even know if I said this in the previous video, but it always felt to me, since this whole situation came out, that she was hanging this over Oz Media's head to silence him. Or even worse still, because she wanted to take legal action against him. Allegedly, potentially, in my opinion. Because if you don't remember, okay, what you're saying, she is threatening to foreclose on his home before Christmas. But she only- th Wait, was this one of the drama channels that uh, H-Bomber guy referenced? Threatened this after he came out against her. And she could have done this at any time prior. So I don't know, it's just the fact that she seems gleeful about having this power over somebody. About, ha, you have acted wrongly, now I can lash out at you. I can take action against you. And to lend even more credence to the theory that she just wanted to take legal action against these people. She was absolutely going over some people she could threaten legal action with and describing ways she could do so. So she's bra- Danny says, I think he showed her channel when he was scrolling through dr drama YouTube drama- uh, the, the, through the drama YouTube drama search. Oof. Bragging about the amount of money that Oz Media owes her, boasting about being able to take legal action against people, and describing the ways that okay. she could do that. Alright, I've seen enough. Um, this video is a nothing burger. None, none of this is verifiable. Uh, this does not meet our definition of receipts by any means, not even a, not even close, but at the very least, it's educational uh, for us because uh, this is part of the reason why I don't... You'll notice that people send me a lot of videos about the Illuminati situation and I react to almost none of them, even though people have sent me tons and tons of videos. Part of the reason why I don't react to most of them is because a lot of them are just repeating things that we've already talked about or are not giving us any new information and are instead just uh, basically restating things in order to make a video um, about things. Now, I'm not, I, I don't think that this video is completely without use. It obviously does bring up some of the previous, uh, the previous things that have happened, but this is not some kind of drama deep dive. It is not some shocking reveal. Um, I, I think we've had enough of this. Here we go. We are going to watch a portion, okay? A portion of Cruel World Happy Minds' latest video, The Fall of Illuminati. And what we are going to watch is something that I have not yet covered. Cruel World Happy Mind had a infamous conflict with Illuminati in which Illuminati uh, made allegations against Cruel World Happy Mind that according to what I have heard, 
did damage to Cruel World, Happy Mind, and her channel. And um, I have been recommended to look into the Cruel World, Happy Mind situation many, many times since I started this. But unfortunately, um, it was a huge rabbit hole. So I did not want to distract from what we were talking about, the actual ongoing issues now, by jumping into something that happened a long time ago. However, because a new video has been produced, we are going to listen to Cruel World Happy Mind tell her side of the story and and judge it for ourselves, okay? So we're going to do that. Let us, without any further ado, react to Cruel World Happy Mind's video, the... Um, uh, 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 the Fall of Illuminati. And again, we are going to specifically be watching the segment titled My Story because the rest is just a summary of the drama and I just said, we're not doing that. I did a deep dive on the drama that is better than anybody else could ever do and you can watch it on my channel if you want to. I bring all the receipts, we critically analyze all of it and it's funny as hell. So without any further ado, Let's watch Cruel World Happy Mind tell her story. So as I mentioned earlier, when I started on YouTube, I was in the anti-MLM community, which was a small and niche community on YouTube that I loved and cared for deeply. And if you've been here on this channel since my start on YouTube, wow, I love you so much. And I really appreciate that you've stuck with me since then. And when I was making videos on anti-MLM content, I posted two videos in a series on Tyra Banks, which had to do with her treatment of models on her reality show America's Next Top Model as well as the fact that she had an MLM company. She would have created that financial freedom and achieved those goals sooner. So scammy. Any sort of scam ad always has the word financial freedom in it. And at that time I was not the only YouTuber to do a video on Tyra Banks and I in no way thought I claimed ownership on the topic of Tyra Banks in any Anyway. In fact, I think at the time, Sloan had actually already done a video on Tyra Banks. Uh, shout out Sloan, you're amazing. So I also want to clarify that I in no way have this attitude on YouTube where if I do a video on a topic, no one else is allowed to do a video on that topic. I don't think that at all. I was only a few months into starting my YouTube channel and a fairly small YouTuber at the time with 20,000 subscribers. One day, a Illuminati had posted a video on Tyra Banks and I didn't even initially know about her posting that video except for I had received a few comments and messages that she had posted a similar video to mine. And me at the time, I don't even think I had 20,000 subscribers. So getting messages like that. Hey, tipster. We got a tipster name drop here. Tipster hangs out in our chat all the time. Damn, shout out to Tipster. Freaked me out because this creator had 600,000 subscribers and I had less than 20. And to hear so many people say the same thing about a situation and message me the same thing scared me. For example, like this comment, which I was again. Wait, hold on. What's this comment say? I noticed that uh, Illuminati uploaded a similar video today or a couple of days ago and I haven't watched it but I glanced over their sources and I feel that it's oddly similar to your content. I'm not sure if it's just coincidence but I don't want your hard work to be copied and exposed to a wider audience to get more views revenue. I'm sorry if this comes off as abrasive or not well researched enough on my part. Just something I noticed and was like Tyra Beauty, Goop, etc. Found, sounds familiar and a similar order of content as well. Hmm. Was again a very small YouTuber. So I already didn't get a lot of messages to begin with. So to be getting that many messages was overwhelming for me. I knew they wouldn't stir up drama for nothing and had messaged me out of genuine concern. For example, this comment, which again, this is literally a screenshot from two years ago that I grabbed from my old video that was reposted by Tipster. And by the way, this old video, I blurred out Illuminati's name because I didn't want to have a direct call out. But um, they said, notice that Illuminati question mark because they weren't sure if they spelled her name right. Yeah, Tipster. 
Drifter, we were just saying you're you were cited in this video. That's you. That's you, Tipster. Damn, you and Illuminati. Damn. God damn. I uploaded a similar video today or a couple days ago and I haven't watched it but glanced over their sources and it's oddly similar to your content. And Tyra Banks and the MLM she was involved in. At the time that people were messaging me this, there were no sources on this person's video. The only thing it had in the description was in parentheses, sources coming soon. Not sure if it's just a coincidence, but don't want your hard work to be copied and exposed to a wider audience to get more views and revenue. Sorry if this comes across as abrasive or not well researched on my part, just something I noticed. I was like, Tyra Beauty, Goop, etc. Sounds familiar and similar. Oh yeah, this burrito is, oh yeah, this burrito's delicious. I'm fucking loving it. It's good as hell. Loving it. Order of content too. The fact that multiple people were kind of like, hey, we're noticing this thing. I hadn't even been the one to initially notice it since I was getting messages to the point where other people were noticing this. I thought it would be the right thing to do to privately message this creator. I send this larger creator a message. At the time of sending that message, since I was like just a really small creator, I was like, I don't know how to handle this. I felt super awkward. So I was just like, hey, um, yeah, I'm getting a lot of messages about this, but like, let's talk. I sent Blair a message saying, hey, hun, sorry I had to. It's an inside joke for anti-MLMers. So I thought that would be like a funny opener. I don't know if you know of my channel. I'm a really small YouTuber who has been inspired by the content you make. I got a few messages about the video you posted about Tyra's MLM because I've done a video on that topic. I'm really happy you're spreading more awareness on this topic, but it did low key feel like a lot of what was said in the beginning of the video was really similar to the things I discussed. Now this is what we call some receipts. We are getting evidence of messages that were sent at the time. Now of course, we can't 100% verify that this message, uh, that this is like the actual message that was sent. However, if, if Blair decided to contest this claim and was able to prove that this message was not sent, that this was not accurately what message was sent, it would be a, 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 a slam in the bag that would just, that would damage uh, a Cruel World Happy Minds um, reputation. So because this is a message, this, because this is the first hand story from Cruel World Happy Mind, not a second hand anonymous whatever, uh, Cruel World Happy Minds reputation is the one that's at, on uh, um, on the line here, and also it could be easily verified by the party that these allegations are being brought against. And yes, as people have said, um, Erica is saying this shot was also corroborated by Tipster at the time, so this isn't like some newly made up message. Um, yeah. Just regarding Tyra's MLM and her controversies, the rabies bit, etc. Coincidences happen, and I'm sure as a larger YouTuber, you're accused of stealing content from people you've never even heard of or seen before. So I get it if this message comes across that way. With the intention of just being open and honest, I was really hurt by the video though, because you're someone who has really inspired me and the content I make. So I wanted to reach out and hopefully have an honest but positive discussion on it all. Either way, I still appreciate the work you do and you know to be fully fair to blair looking back that is an extremely extremely measured message to send to somebody who you was who you believe has stolen your work she has an entire team so i also do think looking back it could have been that someone on her team saw my video or she was not an excuse. If you are employing people to make videos for you and you're profiting off those videos, it is your job to verify and make sure that those videos are not being stolen. And to take responsibility if they are. Receiving just a lot of comments asking to do a video on that topic and they just happened to stumble across similar research. To be fair to Blair, I will never definitively say 
she or her researcher copied me, as there are tons and tons of possibilities as to why another creator can go over a lot of similar information in a video, which I mean is why I wanted to talk to Blair about this information in the first place. As a smaller creator, I was getting a lot of comments of people telling me Blair copied me. I didn't know what to do about it. You feel scared because this other creator has so much power and influence, they can literally squash you and your entire existence. Um, but she wouldn't do that, right? <laughs> So I sent that message, uh -oh. but I never get a response. So I just assume, okay, well, she never responded. She probably is just really busy and never saw the message. And so I honestly moved on and forgot about it. So then a few months go by. I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to do that. I bumped the wrong button. I'm so sorry. Give me one second. I just needed to move my plate as I am done eating. All right, let's continue. Let's continue now that I am done eating. And I end up getting pregnant. Now, if you don't know about pregnancy, there's a few different versions. There's some people who get pregnant and they have great pregnancies where they are not sick and they are very healthy and they're doing great. For me, I was in the sickest state I have ever been in in my entire life, um, especially early in my pregnancy. I had to go to the ER because I was losing fluids. I had to stay on bed rest because I was extremely sick. In the first few weeks of January, being so sick that I can't even get up out of bed, that I can barely even move. And I was so scared during early pregnancy, which is called the first trimester. It's a really fragile state of pregnancy. You want to limit stress as much as possible and you want to rest as much as possible. So I was terrified of losing my baby at that point. And so I was trying so hard to limit my stress and stay as healthy as possible because I was already really, really sick. And so the doctors were just urging me to stay healthy and limit my stress. Um, and then all of a sudden I end up in one of the most stressful dramas I have ever experienced where someone is trying to ruin my career and attack me online. And it feels like they have- Okay, that's the kill shot right there. I am sane. Danny, Danny Fallen, my amazing editor says, I was gonna say, my memory is usually bad, but I genuinely don't think you've reacted to this. I don't ever remember editing any long form content of Cruel World. Thank you. Sanity restored. Manity restored. This is me right now. Unironically, this is me. This is me at the moment. Me for real right now. Thank you. Thank you for Manatee Restored. Don't do that, gay fish. Don't, don't Manatee D-store me so much more power than I have that there is nothing I can do about it. And I'm also completely debilitated and terrified that any more stress than usual will completely send me over the edge. It was one of the most terrifying and stressful times in my life. And I think it really- I love manatees too, little morphine Annie. When I was a kid, manatees were my favorite animal. For a long time, they were my favorite animal. And shortly after that, stingrays were my favorite animal. Traumatized me at that time more than I realized because- I, I basically have a lifelong affinity for uh, creatures of the sea. What can I say? I really shifted into this point of just pure survival where I was just trying to survive past that point and make it through the drama and make it through that point in my pregnancy and just get through it all and just make it stop. Blair put me through all of this. You knew I was pregnant and you still- Aw, thank you, Dragon Nightborn. 
Dragon Knightborn 94 says, me just being in Demon Mama's chat is currently restoring my humanity and sanity restoring from my playthrough of Demon Souls Remastered. Still have so much to do to get the platinum medal, but I'm gonna take a break. <laughs> Happy to be able to provide. Take that break. You still attacked me online. You said mean and hurtful things about me. You did not care if your followers attacked me, what stress that would cause me. Never really apologized to me publicly. Just said we were both stupid. You didn't really care about my health at all. The entire time you only cared about protecting yourself. Yet I was so stupid and believed you could grow as a person. Like we were going to have this awesome woman growth moment that wasn't about drama and clicks oh. and views and was just about two people moving on from it all and growing and caring about a broader message of exposing scams and MLMs and harmful people and practices. But you don't even care about that. You didn't care about hurting me. You don't care about any broader message. You just care Good night, puppy. about you. So anyways, I was pregnant and it hit the fan when I started noticing Blair making subtweets that I was pretty sure were about me. But I was like, no, that can't be about me. I'm literally a nobody. I have 20,000 subscribers. I think a little more at this point, but still pretty much a no one in the YouTube community. But hearing from other people that she was constantly doing this to them now, I am now 100% certain. Hope Eternal, she's getting into it right now. Um, she said that, I did I miss what Blair did specifically to put her in the spiral? No, she's going into that now. She was, she was explaining what happened and now she's explaining, she was explaining what happened on the broad picture and now she's explaining it in chronological order. I understand why you'd be confused. Um, it was a little bit of a weird uh, uh, organizational uh, decision. That yes, she was subtweeting me. She also made an Instagram story post referencing me in a subtweety way that was so bold that people absolutely knew it was about me. She urged her followers not to follow me and claimed I was subbotting. People knew she was talking about me and there was no hiding the passive aggressiveness. At that point, I was like, literally what's this person's problem with me? So some of the people who had watched my channel also messaged me saying, hey, I think you should also check out this podcast with the Welsh twins. Cause she also went on this podcast and said some pretty nasty things about you on there too. And then my stomach sinks. <laughs> Cause first off I'm like, okay, she's subtweeting me, making Instagram story posts about me. Now this podcast, how many things am I gonna have to track of what Blair's saying about me? And then also, oh my gosh, what the heck did she say about me now? What did I do that was supposedly so bad? So I tune into this podcast, my heart is like pounding. Also, I loved the Welsh twins. I loved their videos. So it's so embarrassing for me. I loved Illuminati, respected her, loved these guys. And now she's telling these guys how awful of a person I am. It's humiliating and demoralizing. So my heart's pounding, my stomach's sinking. I'm just feeling like the worst feelings. I still feel the horrible, awful feelings I felt that day. So I listened to this podcast. On this podcast, she's claiming that I was like angrily claiming that she copied me and my content and I asked her for credit. Um, so she messages me and she goes, I'm just really disappointed because you're someone I look up to and you copied my video and I want credit. Which if you remember from my original DM, in that DM, I never once asked for credit. I never said, I want credit, give me credit. Never in that tone did I ever say that. So she literally spread a blatant lie. Legitimately such a dirty move. And I can completely understand why this would be extremely troubling to a, uh, you know, a small YouTuber, um, just beginning out like you you have you you're worried that someone has stolen your stuff you go and you watch the stuff you go wait a second this is like my video and also my other video and you release them in the same order it becomes very obvious that this person is 
stealing from your content and you sit you reach out to them in the most amicable way possible and their reaction is to start whipping up a start building a social media narrative against you and then to go on one of your favorite podcasts and shit talk you on that podcast from a doubly large platform to just misrepresent you and lie about you extremely stressful and also um extremely damaging to your reputation and your ability to grow this is boxing someone out of their ability to grow by building a narrative up, up, about them so that their reputation gets damaged before they're even able to speak for themselves about me on this podcast for no reason she said i was a really small youtuber very much talking down to me in a demeaning way i'm gonna try and keep it vague so i don't mention this person's channel but uh it's a it's a very small youtuber which just goes to show how she views okay so she doesn't she doesn't say the channel by name okay she doesn't say the channel by name but i would be shocked if she if she didn't tell people in private um what the actual channel name was now there's no way you can prove that but when you're going into that level of speci specificity to the point that you're um partially quoting the message and then distorting what was actually said in the message but it's very clear what message is being referred to when blair referred to that message it's very clear that she was referring to this message um it's almost assured that she told those people off air and that she was t talking to her fan base in her discord or wherever um i think it's reasonable to conclude that even if she wasn't saying it publicly so she'd be like well i'm not saying names somebody knew where the names were and that seems fairly obvious by the fact that that um other people went to clearly went and communicated this to small world happy mind if people were communicating this to her, they must have known who she was talking about. And if drama channels picked up on it, then they must have known who she was talking about. Which I think it's fair to conclude that even if she was beating around the bush, kind of, that she was being vague enough to, to have plausible deniability, but specific enough to be able to cause damage to the person at hand. Yeah, it is kind of mafia excuse. It's like, oh, well, you know, I said we should whack him. I didn't say we should whack Billy. I said him. I said, I said him, the guy with the red tie. How many people wear a red tie around here? You gonna bust me for that? small youtubers in general she claimed that i wanted to follow and mimic her content style which was not true at all i had no intentions of becoming that is so fucking wild that is fucking wild to steal from somebody and then to go out of your way to try and damage their reputation by saying that they're copying you oh that is so fucking dirty so dirty doing a corporate content mill she even admitted well kind of that she was restructuring her channel to kind of mock my own channel i'm good on that one and so i'm listening to this and freaking out because now all of a sudden i was wondering if she was going within the youtube community telling people who i was to all of these large this is a rational fear this is a rational fear that is a correct fear to have if somebody is uh like perpetually obsessing over you and vague tweeting it is a completely rational conclusion to believe that person is talking bad and might be damaging your, re your reputation with other professionals in the space um absolutely you might not even be able to prove it but that doesn't mean that it's ir irrational if you know that somebody has an axe to grind with you and they're going on podcasts to vague tweet about you uh, and misrepresent the situation completely while accusing you of doing the thing that they know they did. Blair knows that she took the content. Come on. And we especially know this to be true because we, right now, reacting here via the drama mama, have the benefit of hindsight, which we've now seen the expose of the massive plagiarism she's done. My goodness.
larger youtubers so there were all these rumors about me and no one would ever want to associate with me making me out to be this honestly terrible sounding person which was just so humiliating she then talked down about my research saying my research is just tmz and wikipedia but she had like five sources you know one was wikipedia one was buzzfeed one was like tmz or Buzz something feed. in certain instances i will source TMZ and Wikipedia. Absolute most offensive thing that was said on this podcast was that the research that I do for my videos is just Wikipedia, BuzzFeed, and TMZ. After hearing this, I was so confused that I looked through every single video that I've done to be like, okay, did I, first off, have I ever used TMZ as a source? Also, Blair uses Wikipedia constantly. Yeah, well, we know that too. Really funny coming from Illuminati. Really rich. Just good. Just the richest, most fertile soil you've ever seen. Yup, that's some manure right there. You see how she takes an insecurity of hers and throws it back in someone's face. Blair also said that I just drink my coffee and talk about my opinion in my videos. And Based! Wow, drinking coffee and talking about your opinions? Sounds like original content, something that Blair has never done! And then she sits down for a video, drinks a coffee, is distracted the whole time, and just gives her opinion on how she feels about things. So yeah, that was a little hurtful to hear. But I think at the time, she was just trying to get people to not follow. Oh no, what is this clip? What did you clip me saying? I said we should whack him. I didn't say we should whack Billy. I said him. I said we should whack <laughs> No, you're gonna get me! my channel by basically trashing me and my research which of course wasn't perfect but I was literally just starting out and it was just incredibly vindictive for no reason and so after hearing that podcast I just felt completely alone she did this so publicly on a podcast without even having the decency to reply to me about it like I was nothing and deserved no response from her like she was the victim in all of this me making that message to her gave Blair an opportunity to crush another anti malem creator and that's really all she wanted to do. She wanted to be the only anti MLM creator, the only commentary channel and was what a what a stupid egomaniacal uh, uh, approach. And of course we we have of course seen this over and over again as if as if Blair's content is deserving of being the only anything. Oh my god. It's competitive and mean and cruel with every YouTuber because of that. So at this point, after hearing that podcast, I had no idea what to do because she had been attacking me relentlessly publicly to the point where I felt like I needed to defend myself publicly. I felt like I needed to post a video about Illuminati and show what I messaged her privately and make some sort of video statement. I felt like I needed to at least try to defend myself because because she was attacking me constantly to the point where I felt like she was trying to completely ruin me and it felt like she was not going to stop. It was pretty much at this point tormenting me to know that both public and behind the scenes, she was trying to tarnish my name. So this person in a podcast takes an opportunity to go on there and talk crap about me. But the thing is, what this person says on the podcast is just blatantly not true and so easily disproven. But before I made that video, I even sent her multiple follow-up DMs because after that podcast, it was clear that she could see my DMs. And I was honestly terrified of Illuminati's reputation and her following. I didn't want to have to make a video to defend myself. I respected Illuminati still at this point. And I thought that maybe if I could send her a DM, that maybe there there was some sort of misunderstanding and I could clear it all up with her and it would all be over. Again, I was so pregnant and I was so sick and I delusionally thought that maybe messaging with her still via DMs, we could just resolve this and it would all be over. Because I'm, again, so small compared to her and her platform. I just don't 
want to have to keep fighting with her. So I send her another message saying, last time reaching out to you. Sorry if my DMs have been annoying. I just feel like there's been a misunderstanding and didn't realize how offended you were by my message until someone sent me the podcast where you mentioned me. I understand how you'd be frustrated by my DM, but I didn't intend for it to come across in a harsh way. Why was I being nice and understanding to someone who never treated me nice at all? I don't understand. I think I just wanted this to end. So I just said, there's never been any beef on my end. I don't want beef or anyone thinking I hate them. This is so cringy. Blair was so clearly not in any way her. So I don't want Okay, beef I or anyone is thinking I hate them. This, yeah, is, this so is a situation, by the way, where... um. Uh, the 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 problem is uh is that cruel world happy mind acted like a normal well adjusted human being um while faced with somebody who is not normal or well adjusted in any way um so like here's the thing um it is uh so like when people like subtweet you or beat around the bush um and you know that they're talking about you because of contextual information that is, so a lot of people would refer to this as bullying, um, you know, a form of bullying where basically um, it's talking about you. It's like, I'm not touching you. I'm not touching you. I'm not touching you. It's that type of behavior. It's the, the internet reputational version of I'm not touching you. Um, it's like, oh, I'm not technically talking about you, but I'm talking about a small YouTuber that does anti MLM content that, uh, that, uh, that I may or may not have stolen from that type of thing um is um it's 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 actually kind of a trap and it sucks because um the trap that that person is playing is to try and get you to self-identify so basically um hold on let me let, hold on hold on i think i got this here here we go it's playing off of something like this. Have you ever heard of the small penis rule? The small penis rule is an informal strategy that authors use to evade libel lawsuits. It was described in a New York Times article by Denita Smith in 1998. By the way, this is Wikipedia. If you hadn't, if you couldn't tell, I'm reading from Wikipedia, but honestly, it's because this is the fastest way to communicate it to you. Here's the quote from Wikipedia, which is quoting Denisha Smith from the New York Times. For a fictional portrait to be actionable, it must be so accurate that a reader of the book would have no problem linking the two, said Mr. Friedman. Thus, he continued, libel lawyers have what is known as the small penis rule. One way authors can protect themselves from libel suits is to say that a character has a small penis, Mr. Friedman said. Now, no male is going to come forward and say, that character with a very small penis, that's me. The small penis rule was referenced in a 2006 dispute between Michael Crowley and Michael Crichton. Crowley alleged that after he wrote an unflattering review of Crichton's novel State of Fear, that Crichton included a character named Mick Crowley in the novel Next, the character is a child rapist described as being a Washington, D.C.-based journalist and Yale graduate with a small penis. In response to being snubbed by... Uh, so, so, yeah, okay, so there's just another example. That's sort of the famous example. Um, you see what I mean? Um, and so this, this is kind of a weird, distorted version of that where you can do this sort of thing um, on the Internet, except it's even worse because... Um, in these cases, we're talking about fiction, but what we're talking about on the, in the case of the internet stuff is a genuine attempt to harm somebody's reputation. It's not just like roasting somebody in your fictional novel. It's, um, it's like actually saying something. So imagine this, say that I wanted to, um, say that I wanted to roast, I don't know, somebody in my chat. I could say, no, I'm not saying names, but. I don't know. Let me pick somebody. Who can I roast in chat? Gayfesh, I'm going to use you as an example since you already claimed that you said that you would admit to having a small penis. Now imagine this. Imagine I was like, I go online, I'm, I'm beefing with Gayfesh, and I'm like, 
Now, some of you may may have heard of a particular gay fish that might be swimming in the ocean out there. I don't know, just some homosexual fish out there. You know, what can I say? Uh, he, he's, a, he's a terrible, he's a terrible movie reviewer. He likes cinema sins and he has a small penis. And then if, if, uh, if, if Gayfesh goes, hey, you're fucking shit-talking me. You're saying things that aren't true about me. Then Gayfesh would have to go, and then people would go, well, how do you know it's about you? Then Gayfesh has to go, well, ah, shit. You see? You see what's happening here? That's exactly, that's kind of exactly what Illuminati did here. Illuminati said a bunch of shit about the person that makes them identifiable, uh, adds her own shit onto it and doesn't say the name so that if small world, uh, if, if, sorry, small world, if cruel world happy mind goes, hey, you're talking shit about me. She goes, are you admitting to the shit? You see? You see how it's a trap? <laughs> Everyone in chat is going, I would sooner admit to a small penis than enjoying cinema sins. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> okay, you get the point, okay? You get the point! Alright, I made my point. Let's continue. A again, it's a trap. And sometimes there's nothing really you can do about it if you're a small creator. Because um, even if they're embellishing the story, they're still damaging their your reputation. Because people who are in the know will know. They have talked to people behind closed doors. They've talked to people in private. So there are people out there who are getting the intended message, but you can't build a case against them because they're being vague, or at least it becomes very difficult to build a case against them. All right, let's continue. Let's continue. So cringy. Blair was so clearly not in any way hurt by what I said. She didn't think I hated her. She just saw it as an opportunity to like squash an ant in her eyes. And here I was like thinking I had hurt her feelings genuinely and like wanting to work things out with her when she had done nothing but be so rude and disrespectful to me. I mean, to be fair to myself, this was the first controversy I had ever gone through with any YouTuber, and it was a YouTuber I greatly respected at the time. But looking back, after she's literally not replying at all, it's just so embarrassing. Like, why did I go above and beyond for a crummy person who treated me terribly publicly again and again? who went out of their way to bash me and try and get as many people as possible to think the absolute worst of me if so and the answer here by the way is because um at least from what i can tell you're a better person that's the answer here the reason why you did that is because you're a genuine person and guess what to my knowledge cruel world happy mind does not have any gigantic uh career ruining controversies hanging over her head so she may not be as big of a channel as Blair, although I think that's arguable. I would be willing to bet that Cruel World Happy Mind has more current active subs, and I mean active subs, than Blair does, than Illuminati does. Illuminati's channel has absolutely cratered. So, anyway. Someone's treating you terribly. Don't just make yourself smaller to make them more comfortable. And that's what I did with Blair again and Blair's most recent video has less likes than my stream does right now? BASED! By the way, if you're here, make sure you're subscribed and make sure that you press like on the stream because your likes fuel the fires of hell and make sure that we can keep churning out that signal so that you and many others can hear it. Can you hear the signal? You can. Let's continue. And again and again, I think I was so desperate at the time, literally so desperate to not have any drama, but she really did not care at all and kept going. So eventually it gave me no choice but to defend myself publicly. And I did. I never accused straight up accused this creator, this larger creator of copying me. What this person says on the podcast is just 
blatantly not true. All because I sent her one DM months and months ago. At this point, it's clear to me that they do not care about hearing my side or giving me the benefit of the doubt in any way whatsoever. And to be honest, I feel at this point that I was intentionally misunderstood. For me to try this many times to extend the olive branch, for the message that I sent originally to be taken in such a harsh way and to be justified as a reason to say that many things about me, I feel like it was a very intentional misunderstanding. And I hate that I had to talk about that. Now, at the time, I was so, so afraid of her influence and her fans since I knew that she was so much larger than me that I literally didn't mention her name. Instead, I wanted to post what she had said about me on the podcast and just show the evidence of why it was a lie. The most absolute most offensive thing that was said on this podcast was that the research that I do for my videos is just Wikipedia, BuzzFeed, and TMZ. I could not find anywhere where I use TMZ as a resource. And as far as using Wikipedia, honestly, Wikipedia is a boring resource. If I use Wikipedia, it's because I use that source to define what a company is and then went into my research on that company. And just pray that people would believe me enough and that she wouldn't use her followers against me to try and destroy me. I don't want random people that I've never even had a conversation with. Yeah, I love, uh, by the way, this is a small, this is a small distraction, but yes, uh, everybody who says that, that uh, Cruel World Happy Mind's hair is awesome, I agree. Her hairstyle is amazing. Her hair looks so good thinking some way about me or hating me or thinking I dissed another creator or accused them of copying me and demanded credit, all of that. It just sucks. I don't want people thinking that about me because it's just not true. And luckily, once the video was posted, I received mostly positive feedback. But on Twitter the next day, she literally lost her ever living mind. She was tweeting about doing a live stream on Twitch, debunking some claims made against her. And a lot of people knew exactly what this was. Blair was livid. There's a tweet thread of our kind of back and forth on Twitter that's mm. since been deleted. So the only one that can be seen is from Tipster's video where she says, I love doing debunking streams. Basically saying she's gonna do an entire live stream where her 700,000 subscribers at the time would see her basically try to take me down. Which, I mean, there wasn't anything to debunk. I was definitely at the time scared of what kind of further stress she would try and bring my way. Because again, at this time, I just couldn't afford any more stress. The other Twitter threads that have now been deleted was another Twitter exchange between us, which I can't really recall the specifics of, but I also remember people in that Twitter thread basically replying, being like, this is making you look really bad. You were exposed for life. Yeah, so they so they actually talked about it on Twitter. That just gives f further evidence that that gives further evidence that um, that Illuminati had functionally identified the channel. If Illuminati was directly engaging with Cruel World Happy Mind on YouTube, then it becomes a then then her her even her vague tweeting has uh, no defense. Lying, and now you're saying you're gonna go on a live hey, stream Rikanis. and Thanks attack for being here. relentlessly Very happy to have this you. pregnant woman. That's a bad look. And remember, at this time, I never want- Not tonight, Beard Panda. Not tonight. Wanted to go public in the first place. I tried to keep this private as much as possible because I really couldn't afford this amount of stress and it's just snowballing and getting worse and worse more and more people are getting involved the comments are snowballing by the time i had posted my video i had already publicly posted that i was pregnant and i want to say at this time i was just past my first trimester so it was already common knowledge that i was pregnant Blair knew that I was pregnant and in the early stages of pregnancy, and it's just kind of a bad look wanting to do a live stream takedown of a pregnant person <laughs> because at that point, I couldn't handle the stress that I was literally like this close to just logging off altogether. The health comes first and it was just 
so much. Also, this is so stressful for me. I don't want to be dealing with drama. Physically, I can't. My doctors are recommending me to limit stress as much as possible to the point where I'm this close to getting offline altogether. I literally cannot handle this because if I lose my pregnancy over this stress, I would lose it. Like mentally, I would lose it, you know? So then I receive a message from Blair that makes it sound like not only was Blair going to do a live stream, she was going to post a video about me on her channel to her 700,000 subscribers. She sends me a message saying, so I'm going to be defending my statements against your claims publicly. There were no identifying characteristics that it was you. you oh my God, look at that. What did I tell you? What did I fucking tell you? She did that intent. She structured that intentionally. We can, we can, we can see that. And as outside observers, it is abundantly obvious that in that podcast that she was talking, that she, that we know who she was talking about. And her fans obviously did too, given everything else that's been claimed here. Oh, that is so slippery. You are the one who decided to say that was me when nothing said it was about you. Is there any statement you would like to provide to me before I proceed? I'm not 100% what to even talk out with you. So now, since she said this via DMs, I'm now 100% sure I'm the one that said through Twitter, can we please talk via DMs? I'm not 100% what to even talk out with you since you've decided to make this a public issue. Is there some common ground we can even find in this? Oh my God. You're going to make a public video. So of course I'm newly pregnant, which she never mentions, never has any concern about. And she's saying she's going to be doing all of this, putting all of that on me. And she's saying, is there some common ground we can find in all of this? Basically alluding to the fact that if you do something, then I'm not gonna make these videos. As all of you guys have guessed, of course, her holding that over my head that she's gonna come out with a live stream unless I delete my video. I look through all of this and I can see how she played me like a fiddle and I fell like right- It's actually amazing too, because as Cruel World Happy Mind has shown, Cruel World Happy Mind didn't make uh, any allegations publicly except saying, hey, it seems like you're talking about me. I don't think you're being honest about me. Blair was the one who brought the plagiarism allegations, which weren't even hard plagiarism allegations. It was more like plagiarism inquiries. Blair was the one who made those a matter of public record. So this whole situation is incredibly absurd. It's ridiculously out of line for Blair to be making threats when Cruel World Happy Mind never made never made a public uh, allegation of that type. right into it. So then I reply, I would love to understand from your perspective why this all went down the way it did. If we can work things out privately, I'll delete that entire section of the video. I offered to delete that section of the video. So then I said, but I don't understand why you acted the way you did. Attacked me publicly. A lot of people knew it was me you were talking about in the podcast and DM me. So you didn't hide my identity very well. I don't know. I only showed what you said and my intention was only only to include what was mentioning me in the podcast. I didn't go out of my way to try and find dirt on you or dig up more things I have a problem with. Jesus. I just want to understand from your perspective why you did that. It did genuinely hurt me. I tried to reach out before in a kind way and you never responded. I don't get it. I want to understand what the f happened and she liked that message which again looking back she hearted it because literally she's like i like that that's what i wanted i wanted her to offer up to delete the section of the video now we're getting somewhere she responds okay and i would definitely like some answers too and i have many questions as you do if we can work things out privately i will not go forward with my stream and subsequent videos this is just such like cold, hard threatening. I am going to use my giant channel to, cr she, remember in Blair's own words, she described Cruel World Happy Mind as a tiny, tiny channel on YouTube. So she's literally saying, yeah, I'll fucking ruin you if you don't uh, say that you didn't like that I was talking dishonestly about you.
fucking disgusting. Just fucking disgusting and pathetic behavior. Imagine being so, imagine being so fucking sensitive that, um, that you decide to, uh, that you, that, that, that you respond to someone saying, hey, I think you might have, I'm, I'm worried that you might have taken things from my video and I would like to talk about that, that your response to that is, I'm going to destroy you. Absolutely terrible. Absolutely terrible. Also, welcome back, Polaire. Hope you're having a good time. Subsequent videos. So she was planning to not only make a stream, but make multiple videos about me. If you have Discord, I'm more than willing to talk things out with you. I just hate typing everything in my opinion. And I feel like this will be a bit of a time consuming process for us to go back and forth in DMs. If not, I understand that as well. And we can continue here. I said, I feel that and thanks for responding in a respectful way. I get that you felt attacked. I think we both felt attacked and responded in defense, but I would like to hear your side because that's the respectful thing to do. But that's also what I wanted to do from the beginning and had been trying to do this entire time. And it's so obvious now at this point the only reason she is open to talking with me now at this point is because she's experiencing backlash she was more than comfortable never hearing my side and squashing me like a bug when she felt like she could do that and wasn't experiencing any backlash would you be open to chatting on the facetime feature on insta or we can facetime call each other obviously we don't have to show your face i'm pregnant and would look like a wreck right now anyways or we can zoom or anything else if you have a preferred method of communicating she she said, yeah, I'm okay with that. I didn't know IG had a call feature. I'm terrible with IG. I don't answer messages anymore. Okay, sure, because I've noticed off. I'm good with cams off because I'm a mess today. Let me figure out how to do Zoom stuff. I didn't ask, but like, is now a good time? I said, that's okay. I'll call you on the little FaceTime looking icon. She said, yeah, let's go for it. Let me keep my phone on my desk because I'm like Danny DeVito right now. I'm the trash man. I said, I feel that. That's what I look like most days. Video call 12. Video ended 314. So oh, around a, a three hour call. call, it looks like. After our call, she sends me the supposed sub botting website that made an article on me and told me that I should get a lawyer to take down this article. So it Holy. It doesn't look like I'm buying sub bots. There was an article on a site that does sub botting, I guess. Literally, I have no idea still to this day, like what the this site is the funny mm -hmm. thing is the logo is a purple triangle for this site so oh, oh, oh jesus i don't know <laughs> projecting oh <laughs> So this site apparently wrote an article about this one singular video that I did. This one singular video, mm -hmm. this site writes an article about that. This site has written multiple articles about multiple different YouTubers. That doesn't mm -hmm. mean that they do sub botting on that site. Like, Yeah, that doesn't. Th okay, so a couple streams ago, I talked about SEO, um, a really common thing. Um... A really common thing for websites to do is to hire extremely poorly paid copywriters and have them write essentially garbage pablum articles about topics relevant to whatever they're doing. So say there's a sub a, a, a website that sells sub bots. The way that they boost themselves up in the algorithm is by hiring a copywriter to write about whatever. And that copywriter could just be picking random YouTube channels out of a hat. They could be told, hey, uh, the, the person who's commissioning the, the copywriter could say, hey, we want you to write an article about a channel that you like. And they just do this. And they might not even know which website it's ultimately going to get posted on. Um, they might just be working with a client saying, hey, we need a blog about this type of topic. So like when I used to do some copywriting, when I was a freelance writer, Sometimes you would get a prompt that would just say, we are looking for an article about this topic with these keywords. If you can make an article about this topic with these keywords, we will pay you X amount. So you spin up an article with that topic and those keywords, you have no idea where that article is going to get posted. Hey, thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, you look so nice. I love you. You look cozy.
Oh, you're going to sleep? I should have known. It's so late. I'm going to be, once we're done with this section, I'm going to wrap up because uh, I've got a headache, so. Yeah, so anyway, uh, that that's a weird, that's a really, really weird thing for Illuminati to bring up. And again, uh, you know, we're not going to delve into conspiracy here. Uh, not about the purple triangle thing, but I'm just going to say uh, it's not hard to have to hire somebody to write a copy article about whatever you want. Anyway, let's continue. This is called. I love you. Can I... Yeah, I love you so much. Will you tell chat the good news about Oz? Yes, I will. Let's continue. SEO people, right? Like, sites do this. Oh, okay. Now they're talking about it. God damn it! I just went. Oh, I didn't know they were going to talk about it. I just went into a big. Ah. Oh. So that they can rank up when people search different YouTubers and yeah. buy their product. You know, it has nothing to yep. do with anyone subbotting. You know, right? It's ridiculous. Like, that is and like so, what, that's, that's such a reach. Is she a yoga teacher? Cause she's reaching. That's the stretchiest yeah. reach I ever saw. And there's like this Twitter post where, you know how she's rapidly losing subscribers. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a spike of a thousand subscriber gains in a minute. Deflecting. <laughs> if you're gonna, if you're gonna accuse someone of subbotting, like maybe like check your analytics first before you go off and accuse other people of doing it. Like, come yeah. on, man. <laughs> it's so stupid. Yeah. I thought the phone call was two hours. It looks like with the timestamps of the FaceTime call that it was three hours. And to be fair, the phone call was mostly positive. That's why I wanted to do a phone call or a meeting in the first place. I've heard stories of Blair being hateful and mean on the phone, but it wasn't like that. I feel like usually when I'm on the phone with people, I'm not a mean or hateful person. So I was friendly and I complimented her work and we talked about our opinions on content creation and our differences in our content and i uh by the way it's really really difficult to prove if someone is subbotting like really really hard usually the proof has to come from the platform itself um there are of course exceptions to this rule but the reason for this is because um the analytics that you that we all get access to are extremely prone to errors um, and to, um, uh, and to fluctuations that aren't 100% accurate. Like for example, the, a the a analytics goes down all the time and you will sometimes like, like this is me speaking as a YouTuber, you will very often get a, go to your analytics page and Google will say, uh, sorry, analytics aren't accurate right now. They'll be updated in however many hours we're working on a fix for this issue. But the thing is, is that um, sites that are pulling from the YouTube API don't necessarily reflect that information. So you might be looking at a chart on something like Social Blade and you might see like weird spikes. And that could be from issues within the system itself that have nothing to do with view botting. But you could say that it ha it looks like on a, on a cursory look, it looks suspicious. That's why it's really, really difficult to prove that anybody is doing these types of things without... Um, without extensive research. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. I wanted so badly to believe that if we could clear things up, we could just move on maturely and focus on creating important content. Again, I respected Blair at this time as a content creator. I genuinely didn't want people to start bashing Blair's content because I thought she was doing important work. And I thought that we were two individuals who wanted to take down bad MLM companies. So I thought it would just look bad for us to be fighting with each other it just felt like in the grand scheme of things it was more important to focus on the scammers and the bad companies and blair on the phone call made it seem like she was on the same page and even talked about how she wanted to be my friend which i should have seen as a red flag because it was a completely 180 different personality to how she was posting online about me but i didn't i wanted so badly to believe that she was the person she was pretending to be on 
on the phone call. I thought it was great symbolism of two women content creators coming together for the greater good, but really I think all it was was her trying to further her agenda of me deleting that section of my video. That's all she wanted. She didn't care about the greater good. She didn't care about oh, being damn. friends with me, definitely. She didn't care about the message behind our content or our values or any of that. That three hour conversation was complete bullshit. She was selling me a lie just to get me to do what she wanted me to do, and I was an absolute dumbass who bought into it way too easily. Again, she had done nothing but treat me like absolute crap online at the most vulnerable time in my life, and I forgave her in an instant, and... I don't fully know why. I think I genuinely wanted her to become a leader of people in the creator space. And I did want this situation. Ooh, well, I'm glad that didn't happen. To be a good example for other creators, that there doesn't need to be nastiness and infighting and drama between creators. There doesn't need to be people stepping on other people to get ahead in the creator space. I think I wanted so desperately to believe that someone I respected and looked up to wasn't a complete piece of shit. So I ignored all red flags and only paid attention to the good information that Blair was feeding me. But when I look back on the phone call, there were a lot of subtle, threatening undertones. Congratulations, Again, trans girl there Jane. was the website with the article about me, which, how did you come across this website with this article about me? That's, That's suspicious. suspicious. How did you find this? Either you're doing way too much research on me, which is creepy, or you have something to do with this article of me existing on this website. And as I mentioned earlier in this video, Blair told me about Tommy C and Tipster and how they treated her terribly. They were out to get her. And I think she told me this information so that when they made content- The, the villain Tipster. About our situation, I wouldn't side with them. She also said that they made fun of her appearance constantly and that their fans would attack her appearance. She also said that from my Instagram, she could tell exactly where I lived. And she told me what specific in Wow, that is a that is a psychotic thing to say to somebody. Instagram posts of mine I should take down if I don't want people to find out where I lived. Which Jesus Christ. That is what we call some veiled threats right there. Holy shit. Holy shit. She tried to make seem helpful, but had a threatening, scary undertone to it. Again, I don't have this phone call recorded, but a lot of the statements that Blair made after the fact about our phone call can kind of back up what I'm saying here. It's common knowledge that Blair, yes, yes, at least at yep. this time, lived in Colorado. Now, I don't talk a ton about the fact that I live in Colorado, and I don't publicly share my location that often. I've shared a few times that I live in Colorado. I haven't shared like the specific city, but Blair and I happened to live in the same city at this time. So after our phone call, Blair literally tweets about us both living in Colorado and living near each other and how after this phone call, Holy, this is legitimately, that is psychotic thing to do. Philosophies and interpretations on many parts of MLMs, our personal lives, etc. We both want the drama between us to end. There is no ill will here and we are moving on. I appreciate that we are both able to move on and maybe once the restrictions in Colorado lighten up. Oh, that is, that is so fucking sus. <laughs> Gigasus! We're besties and we're gonna meet up for coffee. Anne goes on a live stream and talks about the fact that I live in Colorado. One thing that happened in addition to this was she did a Twitch stream. We both found out we both live in Colorado and we live like an hour away from each other. I'm wow, that is so dirty. That is the most 
fucking dirty psychological warfare bullshit I I I I've fucking seen yet. Holy shit. Hoping maybe once like the COVID stuff chills out or whatever, um, that we can actually go get also, a. What the fuck is she reading here? The fuck is she reading on this stream? or a coffee so yeah she's blasting my location and the fact that i live near her publicly online in multiple yeah, by the way that's holding a knife to somebody's back and going you better you better delete the video because now everybody knows where you are i've made sure that there's a threat hanging over your head and all it would take is me to say one bad thing and they all know where you live different places so a not only do i live very near to this person that actively tried to rest well destroy dragon me, rest but well. she now knows this information and is blasting don't you dare go hollow oh that's such a you're trying to break my heart i hope you have a great night dragon knight it online telling all of her followers that i live very close to her so she told me privately hey these posts on instagram show exactly where you live you better delete them soon and then goes online right after our phone call and tells all of her followers hey madison lives right near me so all of her followers could basically go on to my Instagram and find all those posts and figure out exactly where I lived very easily. That There's so, so much weirdness about that. I don't want to say she was deliberately trying to dox me and get people. You could never know if she was deliberately doing it, but given her, given the accounting of her character, given the way that she's behaved to other people, given all we know in this extended Illuminati saga, I think it would be fair and rational con to conclude that that was likely what she was doing. Who avidly followed her and possibly hated me to dox me and figure out where I lived. But it kind of felt that way. If someone told me privately where they lived, I would never all of a sudden go on a bunch of public tweets and live streams and blast where they lived publicly and that they live. Yeah, that's a psychotic and unreasonable thing for someone to do. She was, it, it's, it seems very apparent to me that she was using that as a, as a subtle threat within the vicinity of where I lived to all of my followers. Another important context to this is at the time, I did not live in the safest house. And when I was eight months pregnant, actually, my house ended up getting broken into, my car getting stolen while I was home, actually. <laughs> Which was a very traumatizing event. I'm laughing about it now because it was actually just wild so i just i have a thing about that i have a thing about my location being known and just like the safety of where i'm living why was she advertising where i lived to her audience like that and it was never for genuine reasons it was never because she actually wanted to grab coffee with me and be besties with me because a few days after she sent out those tweets about how we're grabbing coffee she completely stopped messaging me <laughs> so you just pretend Tended to be nice to me on a phone call like we were going to be mature adults and figure this out for the greater good of content everywhere we both admitted wrong we both made mistakes is what it was we just kind of moved on because like that's what adults do no mention of the fact that she literally lied about this woman then you went and blasted my location publicly thank you we dm'd for like two days about how tough your life is being a content creator and the drama which i cannot believe i participated in this conversation so casually literally believing all of a sudden that Blair was the victim like she literally did a number on me in the DMs I'm ultra friendly with her it's so, yeah it's so <laughs> embarrassing no, no but like, it's as so long as I've known you though Madison like you've always given people the benefit of the doubt and just been like genuinely like kind to people and people like Blair will take that and use it 
to their advantage and i think blair at that point knew that if she didn't get a handle on that whole situation then this would have blown up the way it's kind of blowing up on her now like it would have looked really bad for her so she's like oh well she's a nice person she'll she'll be easy to manipulate also i have way more subscribers than her so she'll you know but it's not you can't you can't be embarrassed for that though like that's it's not so your fault bad. saying in these dms after our phone call like you do incredible research and we're talking about neighborhoods in the city that we live in we're talking about like you know how we're gonna be you know friends and besties yeah like I'm, I'm sorry that you know now you're getting hate comments about this controversy i'm sorry that happened i was like trying to empathize with her and be like I i'm sorry because i really did feel bad that like because of this she was now getting videos made about her i think any decent human being would feel the same way though i think she yeah. absolutely manipulated you and it's really sad but i also don't want you to like feel bad about that because like it could happen to anybody it's almost like you'd be feeling bad for just being a genuinely good person it's like don't feel bad for that and then a few days later she stopped messaging me so in the phone call we came to an agreement we are both going to make public statements she wasn't going to make her live stream and multiple public videos, multiple public videos on her channel. And that was that, drama over. But I think looking back, I apologized too much. I literally deleted my video, made a public statement apologizing to Blair. And she was basically just like, yep, kind of sorry. We both made mistakes. I just wanted everything to end. I wanted to believe that there was going to be this happy ending where Blair would grow and she would be a great example. And I wanted the torment and stress to end so I could have a healthy pregnancy, which of course I had a healthy baby and there was a happy ending there, which I'm so grateful for. But I regret bending over backwards to make myself so little. Why did I just let her continue on, give her exactly everything she wanted? What if I stood up more, held her accountable more for how she had hurt me and what if that prevented her from hurting more people i'd hoped that maybe she would have learned and grown from all of this and moved on and been a better person not as vindictive at the end of all of this mess that was really all i could have hoped for but that was really a lie i had told myself at the time because she continued to be horrible and do horrible things and all that stress and chaos was for nothing. The cover-ups I did for her were for nothing. She made a public statement and a live stream saying basically we're now besties. And after the phone call, I thought we were on fairly good terms. I would message her for two days after our phone call and the messages I still have after all this, they're still up, even right before making this video. We talked about the anti-MLM community, about predatory practices MLM companies do with mom groups. She acted like she could be a mentor to me as a YouTuber. There was a- Yeah, a mentor who potentially stole your videos. Oh, Jesus. YouTuber that was sort of tweeting about this drama, asking why she couldn't forgive. Yeah, uh, Circa says, unfortunately, I don't know if there's anything that she could have done to stop her. It had to play out. Yeah, the unfortunate truth is that sometimes people in positions of power can just hurt you. And your only option is to uh, is to make the best decisions that you can while you wait uh, for um, while you wait for assistance from elsewhere. And in this particular case, the assistance from elsewhere was the dissolution of Blair's internal uh, social groups. Um, and it sucks. It, it, that's just something that absolutely sucks. That sometimes you're forced into a position where all you can do is take the actions you need to to survive. And trust me, I know what this is like firsthand. As many of you who've been with me for a long time know, my channel um, experienced a widespread um a uh, campaign of attempts to basically choke my channel out before it could grow at all it severely damaged my channel and my reputation uh based on completely false claims um yeah pretty bad so um what can i say sometimes you just have to do what you can to weather it and it just sucks somebody in a position of power can hurt you 
forgave him in the manner she forgave me and I sent her a screenshot about that. I even sent her a screenshot of Tommy C's video, but I asked her if she wanted me to make a comment on that video. Again, she had- Why are all the commands fucked up? I don't know convinced me that Tommy C was attacking her appearance and that thumbnail on that particular video did kind of make it look like he was making fun of her appearance. Recently, I went through and watched that video. In that particular video, there was nothing bad that Tommy C said about Blair. So again, I think Blair fed me a complete lie in that circumstance and I empathized with her, felt bad for her because I thought she was being attacked for her appearance by this group of people when it was a complete lie. I want to apologize for Tommy C for thinking that you were going after someone for her appearance for years when that was just a complete lie I was being fed. But I think- Jackalope says some of the worst and outrageous lies I've ever seen on the internet against someone were against Demon Mama back during the hippy dippy era. All of that was very tough to watch. Yeah, some of the things that were said about me were so outrageously ridiculous, um, and yet they still managed to do damage and it's taken time to recover my reputation. That said, I have been vindicated in more than one ways. And as we can see, uh, given that I had nearly 600 viewers all night tonight and my channel is continuing to grow at a steady pace, uh, you can't keep the devil down, okay? You can't keep the demon mama down. The first demon type streamer is rising and the signal is being heard, so. Yeah, although right now we are out of the era of demon mama derangement syndrome, there are still a number of people out there um, who are absolutely still suffering from the effects of demon mama derangement syndrome, but it, we've been, we've managed to control the spread, which is pretty impressive. I gotta say, I didn't expect that to be the case. I, you know, I think it's like, uh, have you guys ever played the game? Uh, I think it's called pandemic is the name of the game. The pandemic game. Yeah. It's like a game where you, you know, you have to spread the, uh, you have to spread, you have to create a little virus or a bacteria and spread it around the world. And you know how if you make a virus that kills people too quickly, it won't spread very far because they die too quick. And so oftentimes you need to have a virus that doesn't kill people so that it spreads further. Um, at Demon Mama Derangement Syndrome had a maximal, like it had a high mortality rate which as a result, it didn't spread to many other people because the people who caught it, they just died and didn't spread it to others. What can I say? Or Plague Inc. Plague, Plague Inc. is the other one. That... <laughs> I know at least one prominent person who still has quite a bit of demon mama derangement syndrome. True! And also, as Jessica Metal says, all I'm gonna say is that for all the shit you got, at least your partner still love you very much, unlike some of your prominent haters. True! True! Ah, uh, let's get back to the video, everybody. I think her trying to be my friend, B -b 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 saying she realized the errors of her ways and messaging me in a friendly way was 100% an act. Because a few days after it worked and I had deleted everything, she stopped messaging me completely and went on acting like I never existed. And I think the reason why is she never anticipated that Tipster and other people were going to screen record my video. So thank you. I think she thought she was going to get away with it all and that the entire controversy was going to be deleted forever. And when Tipster and other people reposted it, she realized that she wasn't just going to get away with it. And being pissed off, she just cut contact with me. And I realized I was completely used. She gave zero shits about me. It wasn't a women supporting women. We're being so mature about this and moving on for the greater good. It was just a larger creator taking advantage of a smaller creator using her power to threaten me by making not only a live stream, but multiple videos about me for me just trying to defend myself on. Appreciate that, Swamp Hag. It, uh, that shit goes really far. Again, some of the shit that was said about me was, first of all, completely baseless, and secondly, deranged. 
I I don't I don't, I'm not gonna go through all of the things because I don't have time for that and I don't care. Um, but yeah, there's been a ton of people this last. It, it's been it's been very common this year. There's been a lot of people this year who have decided to um, check out my content for themselves and have then gone and taken a look back at what was said about me and have realized how um, out of pace with reality it was. And I don't blame people for um, I don't be, blame people for being misled. It's not their fault that somebody. I mean, this is like what we're talking about here. I don't blame people um, for being misled. You know. Uh, that's not 100% accurate, bo another board person, but but it's still somewhat accurate. Anyway, let's continue. Line. Then to get me to do what she wanted, she pretended to be my friend. And the second it all didn't work out for her, she cut me off and just threw me to the side, literally in the trash. All that bullshit. Oh, we had a great chat. We're gonna grab coffee one day. Yeah, it's been two years, Blair. I'm still waiting on my coffee. I don't know, maybe you just think I drink too much of it in my videos. So I probably don't need any. And then she sits down for a video, uh, maybe 30, 40 minutes long, drinks a coffee, is distracted the whole time, and just gives her opinion on how she feels about things. In her mind, she just saw me as a fool and just like she got away with it all. And she did for the time being. And I was a fool. I was. And after all of that, it just caused me to distance myself from a lot of people in the YouTube community. I just did not trust anyone because she was one of my first. Delance says, your Illuminati videos have a lot of views. Yes, they do. My Illuminati videos have been uh, very popular. And I gotta say, I, I think I understand why. I do believe that I give, I do coverage. I, I believe that my coverage of the Illuminati situation has been a step above. Uh, I think that I go in depth. I think that I'm careful with it. I present things in a clear and communicable way, and I give people a lot of fun to enjoy along the way. I'm making jokes. I'm making goofs and gags, and and I say things in a funny manner, and I say do silly faces sometimes, and I do little dances, and sometimes I ramble about things that are interesting to me in between to keep things fresh. It's fantastic. Exactly, Fortnite. Let's continue. First, if not the first experiences I had with any creator in the larger YouTube community. So it really made me think, is every YouTube creator like this? Is every YouTube creator mean and vicious and going to take advantage of you and step all over you the second they get a chance? Though I know that there are some really great creators out there who have been incredibly nice and kind and amazing and supportive. So I wanna take this opportunity in my video to shout those people out. Turkey Tom. Um, I've recently messaged and was so, so kind to me. Sloan is always amazing and I just always smile when I think of him because never a bad thing to say about him. He is so incredibly kind. Mooncat has always been an inspiration. My partner likes Mooncat to me genuinely original content puts so much effort into her content for being original and is so inspiring smoky glow i started watching her before i ever made youtube videos and i hope she's doing okay love her to death within the anti-mlm community savannah marie and margaret angel are my ride or dies and my true friends love them to death, have always been there for me, and I highly recommend checking- Wait, did somebody say Turkey Tom? Did I- did I miss a shout out to Turkey Tom? <laughs> Turkey- Turkey Tom is a goofball. Listen, the only thing I have to say, the only positive thing that I have to say about Turkey Tom is that that guy, that guy is the only guy I know who brought that- who brought that, uh, that 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 fucking 14th century drip into the future, okay? He's got the he's got the 2023's most rockin' tonsure. I've never seen anybody doing the Friar Tuck look in 2023 as good as that motherfucker, okay? Out their channels. I, I bet remember Jim I bet he bakes a solid loaf, and I bet he brews a killer lager, okay?
Aina commented on one of my videos once and I was just over the moon so happy about it. Love her. She's always amazing in the YouTube community. And thank you so much to FPS Diesel for being the only creator to email me and ask me directly what happened between me and Illuminati before making a video about the Illuminati situation. I want to clarify, I decided to work on my own video to bring my experience forward in hopes that it helps validate the experience of others and maybe help foster a positive creator environment when all is said and done, as well as finally close this chapter in my life. That being said, after doing my own research on wonders struck the click one topic in Oz Media's experiences, I've further spoken with them to hear from their own perspectives and get some further clarity on their story, and even discussed their recollection of my interactions with Blair. I'm so thankful that through this, I was able to make friends with genuine, kind, and also just funny and intelligent creators, and was able to overcome trust issues that Blair instilled in me, and they've definitely helped me through that and understand what I went through. So there are some amazing creators out there. I just think I was initially heartbroken when this happened and it again just happened at such a vulnerable point in my life and that's my story with Lair or Illuminati. This has been such a long- <laughs> The idea of a person who subs to and religiously watches Tipster, Turkey Tom, and Municat is absolutely sending me right now. <laughs> True! Okay, true though! An exhausting video. That at the end, I don't really know what to say. Besides, it's a cruel world out there. <laughs> Watch out. And that's all I have to say for this video. Thank you so much if you made it to the end of this video. Comment cruel world so I know that you made it to the end of this video. Especially on this one, it really means a lot to have your support. I know so many of you guys wanted to hear my story, but we're patiently waiting and that really means a lot to all me. All right, you all heard it here. This was Cruel World, Happy Mind, telling her side of the conflict with Illuminati. Um, all of you, please, if you, if you, if you liked this video, make sure you show some love from the imps over on Cruel World, Happy Mind's video. Um, and we're going to talk about a little bit more of this drama real quick, uh, including one last little piece of information that I think people will find particularly relevant. So um, this is a pretty well-supported narrative. Um, Cruel World Happy Mind has been willing to show DMs, has been willing to show messages in the time that they happened, was willing to show um, evidence of, a, of the video that it was posted, and of course the videos that she posted originally and what she said in them was recorded by other channels. So this is a... A, a fairly credible account. A lot of what she says here and a lot of the behaviors that she encountered with Blair, uh, we of course have now seen to have been replicated elsewhere. Earlier, when we were watching the H-bomber guy H-bomb dropped on Illuminati's head, I pointed out that the fact that she has been verified to have done two very egregious uh, uh, acts of plagiarism um, in her videos uh, casts a doubt on all of her other content and it certainly um it certainly g grants a lot of credence to the cl claims made by cruel world happy mind now of course cruel world happy mind already demonstrated why she felt that blair had likely stolen uh, or at least borrowed heavily to to be kind from her uh, videos. She already explained why she felt that way and she never made a hard allegation. She simply said, I feel like this may have happened and I would like to open up a dialogue about it to which Blair responded with incredible defensiveness and then offense and a, a, a sort of like, uh, 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 a, 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 what's the word that I'm looking for here? Um, why can't I think of the word? Uh, what's, what's the word I'm talking about? Uh, like when you attack before somebody can get the chance to attack you. I'm blanking. Um, terrible. Terrible blank on that word. You know, what I'm, you know what I mean. Preemptive. Thank you. Jesus Christ. It's because I'm on stream hour seven. Okay. A preemptive strike uh, on uh, <laughs> initiative. That's from Baldur's Gate 3, which we were talking about even earlier. No, but a preemptive strike uh, against Cruel World Happy Mind. Um, and, uh, I think that 
with all of this in mind, we can conclude that there is a uh, there is a large case against Blair, not only on the mistreatment of her employees, not only on the mistreatment of other content creators, but uh, on a large and syst a, a large and repeated tendency of either borrowing or outright stealing uh, content from others. Now, how all of this fits in with the rest of what we know about Blair is is somewhat apparent on uh, on its face. Um, we now know that Blair is not only incapable of being um, honest in the way that she retells events in her conflicts with others, but that she is also incapable of being honest about what type of work she's putting out into the world. We have essentially no reason, no rational actor in this situation has any reason to trust anything that Blair says about anything. She's not honest about her own content. She's not honest in recounting conflicts she has with others. This has now been proved on multiple points that she grossly misrepresents what actually happened in the conflicts. And why should we trust any of the claims that she asks for trust on? Many of the claims that she made in her own response video so many months ago now um, uh, were, were basically saying, you should trust me because I am one of the people involved. But we now know that she doesn't speak honestly about those incidents. Um, now, of course, we are living in the post H bomb era. Uh, H bomber guys, uh, video, which mostly fixated on James Summerton, has resulted in James Summerton deleting his Patreon and also clearing his YouTube channel out completely. Now, we have not, we have yet to see anything like that for Blair. Um, that said, I cannot imagine that, uh, H bomber guys video, which has gone properly viral. So many people have seen H Bomber Guy's video. Um, I cannot imagine that she is unaware of it, and I cannot imagine more so that her previous, uh, her current and former fans are not aware of it. Um, undoubtedly, they have seen this now, and I think that puts Blair in a particularly tight position. Now, so far, we have never seen Blair willing to retreat at all. In all of our coverage of, of Illuminati, Blair has basically perpetually been on the offensive, going so far as to initiate legal battles with multiple people. And honestly, I don't know how she's going to go from here. With, with H Bomber Guy's video, it is unequivocal what she did. We know that she didn't, like, ask permission from the creators of a Netflix and Hulu documentary to directly reproduce their work in her piece. She got caught red-handed. There's no denying that. She can't sue H Bomber Guy for what he showed because he demonstrated it. So I don't know where she's going to go from here. And I, I really do wonder if it's, if it's going to, you know, result in her just, just doing a James Summerton and bombing her channel. LB says, I think she's going to keep trying to pump out as much content as possible to get as much money out of it as she can before it all goes away. I do think that there's that that's the most likely possibility. That has been her approach so far. She has continued to post through it. Um, she has continued to post videos. However, let's take a look. Let's take a look at what her latest videos are doing. She has dropped Pita. her, her whoa, excuse me. Her subscribers have dropped drastically. She's down to 1.29 million subscribers. And again, that's lost from active subscribers. Let's take a look at what, what her videos are doing. The Deal Dash Deception was posted two days ago. Before that, four days ago, Burgerim was overdone and oversold. Uh, six days, no, seven days before that, what is the power of persuasion? Damn, she has been churning out videos. Holy shit. She really does just chunk out these videos. I got this mountain bike. Oh my god. You weren't kidding. I thought people were exaggerating slightly. The, her video has less likes than my stream does currently. A channel with... Hold on a second. I want to show you this one second. My video right now has 749 likes. 
she has 1.29 million subscribers and th and her video has 553 likes my stream with 27,000 subscribers 1.29 million subscribers for illuminati demon mama 27 thousand almost 28,000 subscribers we have 749 uh likes her video has 553 likes i just want to show you by the way by the way sorry just to take a moment that is proof that size isn't fucking everything it's the motion of the ocean motherfucker motion of the ocean always wins Jesus Christ. I, like, just, just, I want you to think about the David and Goliath shit going on right there, okay? Jesus Christ. Sorry about that. Didn't mean to press that. Does anybody know, does anybody know when the comments got turned off? Does, does anybody know that? Can anybody give me some info on that? I heard that it happened, but I have no idea when it supposedly happened. It was just after the H Bomber Guy video? Hmm. Her, vi her vi video has 0 0.01. Wait, so hold on a second. That's going to be a... Hold on a second. So that means she has a one, a, not even a 1% engagement rate with her video, right? Am I doing that right? A, like a, what, what, what is 1% of 1.29 million? Hold on. Yeah, okay, so she has slightly more. She has a almost 2% engagement rate from her subscribers to her video. Not quite 2% of all of her subscribers were even willing to watch her video. Holy shit. That is terrible. That is just terrible. We gotta look at her social blade. This Monday, so on Monday, she lost 10,000 subs. In the last 30 days, she's lost 30,000 subs. Oh my God, her views have tanked. Oh my God, her views have fucking tanked. Oh my God, her subscribers have tanked. So this is, this is just about, this is just about where the drama happened right around here. Negative 10,000 subscribers, negative 170,000 subscribers, negative 70,000 subscribers, negative 40,000 subscribers, negative 20,000 subscribers, 30,000 subscribers, 20,000 subscribers, 20,000 subscribers. She's lost entire channels worth of subs this year. Oh my god. Yearly estimate, negative 360,000 subs. Jesus Christ. And that is, of course, we don't even have the information since the H-Bomber guy video came out. I, I have a feeling that the H-Bomber guy video uh, might be the nail in the coffin. I have a feeling that the H-Bomber guy video is likely to convince people to, to uh, completely unsubscribe from her, which would cause which could cause a massive drop off, and she's already have she's already just bleeding subs. Oh my goodness! Yeah, we'll be able to find out in January. At the beginning of this, she had almost she had one point seven 
1.7 million subscribers and she's dropped all the way down to 1.29 million. My goodness. Wow. Again, post H bomb world, the game has been changed. Uh, H bomber guy did one of the most, I mean, blistering exposes we've ever seen. There's one final thing that I want to talk about um, before we wrap up this segment. Thank you for being here with me. But I wanted to mention, um, Oz Media recently did a live stream fundraiser. And this fundraiser was a, a very transparent uh, situation. Um, basically, uh, Oz Media um, needed a certain amount of upfront cash to be able to put down to stop the foreclosure process on their house. And if you'll recall, one of the pieces of this drama, the last chapter update that we did on the Illuminati drama was about Oz Media. Oz Media is Blair's ex, uh, who is closely involved with basically every project that Blair has done, and who, in my opinion, suffered abuse at the hands of Blair. Um, one of the ways in which this abuse was uh, unfolded was by uh, using uh, a series of financial technicalities to force Oz Media into a position where the house was being foreclosed upon forcibly. And the way that this happened is somewhat complicated. However, it turned out that there was a way for Oz Media to essentially buy out of the foreclosure, but that a certain amount, a lump sum of cash was necessary so Oz Media did a fundraiser and and put out a call. Please, if anybody is willing, help me raise the money to be able to keep my house so that I can continue to make content so that I can be out of this foreclosure nightmare and I can keep the place that I live in. And um, it succeeded massively. To my knowledge, Oz Media was able to raise somewhere in the ballpark of over $30,000, which was enough to cover the, um, which was enough to cover the uh, foreclosure buyout process, which is um, awesome, which is awesome to hear. And uh, also, it just goes to show you that you can be honest and put out a call for a financial need. You don't have to lie and mislead your followers that you can just put out a call for help and people will be willing to help you. It was just over 33,000. That's fucking fantastic to hear. Absolutely incredible. So I wanted to make sure that um, it, what he needed was 25K. Well, that gives him a little bit of room to work with. I think that is fantastic to hear. Oh, Jesus. Oh, goodness. Well, we're going to have to talk about that. Well. Um, so congratulations to Oz Media. Very, very happy to hear that it was a success. And thank you to all, of course, a, 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 a secondhand thank you to all of the people who were willing to support uh, Oz in this, as I do genuinely think that Oz Media... Uh, suffered in this situation and was put into a very difficult situation. What this proves is that it is actually possible for people to resist, uh, uh, to resist what seems like overwhelming power, what seems like power, uh, uh, power being wielded irresponsibly and cruelly to hurt people, and uh, it doesn't mean it doesn't always work. Uh, Blair was able to do some damage to the people in her life. But those people have found help via their community, via the broader communities that care online, and that is a really, really good thing to see. It proves that what, what, what we do online does matter, and how we do it does matter. Anyway, I wanted to make sure that we ended this off with a positive tone. Um, uh, <laughs> because, uh, honestly, this whole situation has been very, very, very... Uh, uh, difficult to look through. A lot of people have been hurt in this and it can induce a lot of fear, especially in people who are aspiring to this space. That's part of the reason why I want to talk about it. 
um, is because I want people to feel equipped to be able to spot things that could otherwise threaten them in these spaces. I want people to be there, to be able to, to, to pursue their dreams in content creation and to be able to do so safely. I want new, young, talented people to be able to come into the YouTube space, make amazing videos, keep us all entertained and informed and having a great time. And I want them to be able to do it safely, not being taken advantage of by people who want to exploit their labor, who want to steal their hard work, who want to lie to them, who want to bind them into financial contracts. And I think that the only way that we can make that world possible is by learning how to look through this stuff, learning how to what it looks like and being able to spread this knowledge and as far as wide as possible and also to be able to call out the bad actors and prevent them from doing more harm. Anyway, this has been an absolutely incredible Drama Mama episode. If you enjoyed this, please make sure that you are subscribed to my channel and ring the bell down below because you know I've got so many treats for you. This is Demon Mama. Can you hear the signal?